You are watching Co-op for Two, broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois, August 18th, 2022, at around 11 p.m. And today we're going to play this small box game, Carta Ventura Lhasa. There are actually four games now set in this series. You can see it's a small little box. And um, I've bought this one at Gen Con, but I believe it's available now everywhere. Amazon, Cool Stuff, Inc., Miniature Market. And the games in this set run about $12 to $15, depending where you buy them. This was a little sample free game they were giving out at Gen Con to people who purchase things. And this game came on my radar because of a review that Marco Omnigamer did, one of my favorite YouTubers, did a spoiler-free review of Lhasa, and he said that Lhasa was much better than the other one he played. I forget which one, which was the other one he played. There are links in this video, however, to Marco's review as well as a full playthrough by another YouTube channel. Normally I like to try to only play games that don't have a playthrough already out on YouTube, but it looks like there's a good playthrough of YouTube on YouTube already of this game. You don't really have to watch this video. I'm interested in playing this, checking it out, so we're gonna play it live anyway. If the chat could let me know if everything, if the audio and video is okay. I should say the audio may sound a little different. I'm trying a different setup with the air conditioner running here to sort of give us this cold weather feel for me rather than 80 degrees. But I am using my normal overhead mic with a little bit of noise reduction. So the audio may not be quite as good as normal, but hopefully it won't be too annoying. I did some tests. Hopefully it's reasonable. Okay, I see we've got a bunch of people here. Anna is here. Jonathan Warner here is going to st stay for a little bit. Matt is here and Drunk Tiger is here. Okay, so let's talk about what this game is for a second so we set our expectations correctly. This is not a mystery game. This is billed as sort of a light narrative choose-your-own-adventure game. Let's take a look at the back and read it. Let's see what it says here. One to six players, 12 up, 60 minutes. Normally we multiply this by about three for, a YouTube, for, for my YouTube stream. So about three hours we can expect. It's heavy on adventure and exploration, low on complexity, and high in historical content. So I think we're going to learn a little bit about Lhasa, what Lhasa is. I'll tell you a little bit about it. This game has 70 cards. The sample adventure that Cosmos is putting out has 30, 27 cards. In case we want to look at this later, if we finish this early, you can see that it says, somewhere it says there are five endings. Maybe not on the back here. There are a bunch of different endings, and we'll get one ending when we play. So if we go through this quickly for some reason and we want to try again, we might try playing it again. To me, it looks a lot like Seventh Continent. I know the gameplay isn't really like Seventh Continent, but it has the same feel of these square cards that get laid out as a map and represent choices. A little bit also like a Mortem Medieval Detective, where you played by cards, had some choices, and the cards filled out a map. Sometimes you flip them over. No rule book. You learn the rules as you play. We're going to learn about Alexandra David Neal, who I don't know anything about, but apparently is a historical figure. And Cosmos has been doing a bunch. They're making a name for themselves. This is a German company making a name for themselves with these little small box adventure uh, escape room type games. Exit is the big one, and they just keep pumping out more and more of those exit boxes. Those are much more puzzle-based. 
but they also have you can see so there there's the adventure game series that they make sorry right there there are about five games in that series now i'm a big fan of that that combines sort of exit is almost all pure puzzle with a tiny bit of narrative adventure games is sort of half and half with some gimmicks about a map of rooms and this is their smallest um foray into here although i understand this is not going to be much puzzliness to it much more reading and choose your own adventure all right what else do we have to talk about anything else in the channel that anyone's been up to the we're waiting for the play by mail replies to arrive for our la noir and sherlock holmes game as soon as those arrive we'll schedule some more streams for those i haven't gotten them yet um anything else from the channel um so here's how we're going to play this. I, I just want to remind you of sort of the ground rules. I don't like to have these long delays because there's like a 10 second delay in YouTube. If I ask a question before I get an answer, it's too painful to try to make every decision a sort of group decision. There are some YouTube channels that actually I've seen them. I saw a playthrough of Legacy of Dragonhold where when every choice came, he put up a little poll on the screen and people voted, and uh, that seems fun, but it, I don't have the patience for that. I, it's it's a little too, there's too much waiting for each turn. So I'm gonna play this sort of as if I'm playing it solo. If we get to, I tend to dither and have, the one of the reasons I don't play these games solo, don't play many board games as solo, is the sort of weight of making these decisions um, sits heavy on my shoulders so i may come and pause and ask for help but you guys should feel free to make suggestions quickly the moment you see a card if there's something you want to do make your suggestion i'll keep my eye on the chat and that way by the time i get to the point where i'm ready to make the, de the decision you've already made your suggestions don't wait for me to suggest and if i ignore you that's okay don't take it too hard all right Drunk Tiger says started playing through the ages, the digital version. I don't know the digital version. I'm a, uh, I'm a fan of Roll Through the Ages, which was a early roll and write using some wooden pieces by uh, Matt Leacock, I believe. Uh, but Through the Ages is a civilization building that's civilization building game that's well regarded, but feels too. Uh, combat heavy for me i've swapped around some of the boxes behind me to give you some entertainment while you check those out and see the new things um see the new games if you're interested so what is lhasa oops what is lhasa lhasa is the capital of tibet Tibet being this contested area in China, if you're, if you agreed with, if you agree with that, and the Dalai Lama, and there's lots of controversy there over the Dalai Lama. There's some fascinating discussion of. Uh, I watched a fascinating discussion with Lex Friedman and a. An AI scientist who's closest to my heart with many of his positions, but I can't remember his name right now. And he was discussing the idea of the uh, Dalai Lama as a, a as as an example of a sort of reevaluating the sort of a mimetic thing that the that you don't think of yourself as part of a body you think of yourself as sort of a political organiz a living political organization that gets reborn by choosing a successor and just an interesting discussion how you could look at it as just a reframing of how your brain 
what you think of as your brain. Is your brain a piece of software that can get continued into multiple generations? Anyway, I'll, if I remember, I'll leave it in the comments what, the, what this AI guy, what his name is that I really like. He's got a bunch of ideas on um, and written a bunch of interesting papers on building brain-like intelligence, which is a uh, subject dear to my heart. Okay, anyway, so Loss is the capital of Tibet. Uh, I gather from this mountain here that we may be doing some mountain climbing. It's a tall Loss is like 12,000 feet, not half the height of something like Everest. And that'll be my last recommendation before we open this up, is one of my favorite books of all time is Into Thin Air by John Krakauer about a disastrous year on Everest, uh, an expedition that killed many people, and one of my favorite books. Okay, shall we get started here? Let's open this up. We're just going to follow along with the instructions as we play. So I've got a stack of cards and some little historical information. Let's take a look at this. Maybe we'll read this together. Historical background, the Mason Alexandra David Neal, no connection to Dave Neal who did the Baker Street Irregulars, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Box. Says the Mason Alexandra David Neal house allows visitors to see both where she lived in the writer's thoroughly restored villa, her garden, as well as the museum, which explored her achievements, works, and travels. So you can visit this site. This is a real person, I guess, that's going to be the star of today's adventure. I guess we're going to read this. In the early 20th century, Alexandra David Neal spent 25 years of her life in Asia becoming the first European woman to go to the Forbidden City of Lhasa in Tibet. An intrepid explorer, she relished every danger, refusing to submit to any physically or socially imposed limitations. She was also a woman of letters and produced a considerable body of literary work. Born in Paris, she died in dijon le bons in 1969 at the age of 100 bequeathing to the town the greater part of her worldly goods, property, archives, collections, and literary rights. A woman who adopted various pseudonyms at the beginning of her career, she eventually chose Alexandra David Neal, no accent, as her pen name, a name that is now inseparable from Tibetan exploration. Embarking on her legendary voyage at age 43, the trip, originally meant to take only 18 months, would last 15 years, 14 years. This pilgrimage, which started in Ceylon, Sri Lanka, was punctuated with many notable meetings, including the 13th Dalai Lama, with whom she obtained an audience in 1912, the Maharaja of Sikkim Sun, oh, and Sidkyong Toku Namgyala, Namgyal, the Maharaja of Sikkim Sun, who became her devoted friend and introduced her to a young boy, Afer Yangden, who would become her traveling companion and later her adopted son. Accompanied by Yang Den, Alexandra traveled all over Asia in search of knowledge about the origins of Buddhism. As the war had just begun in Europe, World War I, I guess, she passed the winter in study and meditation at the monastery of Lachan, where she was initiated into the yogic and meditative practices of Tibetan Buddhism. Instructed by the Gamchen, non-monastic practitioners of yoga, she learned skills that included the technique of tumo, which allowed her to warm herself without fire when surrounded by snow. And she oversaw the construction of a retreat that she sheltered in, Deshen Ashram. After two years in this retreat, Alexandra crossed the Tibetan border without authorization towards Shigats, where the Panchen Lama lives. I don't know who that is, the Panchen Lama. Which resulted in her expulsion from Sikkim in 1916. She continued her voyage toward Japan and Korea before reaching the monastery of Kambam, where she stayed for nearly two and a half years. Because her next objective, Lhasa, the capital of Tibet, was forbidden to foreigners, she stayed for a time at Jikundo, copying the geological survey maps of the Tibetan zone. Attempting her first departure toward Lhasa after several setbacks, Alexandra discarded any baggage 
that could identify her Western origins. In the middle of winter, she and Yang Jen disguised themselves as Ajopas, known in these times as pilgrim beggars, and separated themselves from the group, throwing themselves into a 2,000-kilometer march that lasted several months. They moved at night and hid by day to avoid discovery, a strategy which sometimes put them at the mercy of bandits. Alexandra, who knew the local superstitions well, negotiated these dangers with consummate art, casting out spells and playing the matriarchal enchantress. When her choice of character didn't work, she made sure to carry something she could use to defend herself, her revolver. Traveling as pilgrims, they begged for food and shelter on their way, an incredible journey both into the heart of Lhasa, the place of gods, one of the highest cities in the world and also into an enchanting rural culture which previously previous journeys had not allowed them to see. This epic voyage inspired My Journey to Lhasa, her best-selling book. And there's Alexandra in Lama's clothes with Yang Den in 1920. Historical advisor, the team of Mason Adian under the guidance of Nadine Gomez, curator, Indian culture advisors, Okay, so this was written by them. All right, so here we go. So I, it sounds like maybe we're recreating this trip to Lhasa by Alexandra David Neal, which is pretty cool. All right. So I'm not sure exactly how easy it's going to be to see this. I'll try to give you a close-up most of the time on the current card. We'll read it together, and then we'll lay out the map on the table. Hopefully we won't need too big a space, and we'll figure out what's the best. I don't know if you guys are on big screens. Can you read the text of the card if I keep it that big, or do you need me to go to this largest scene when we read it? So this game, unlike the exit games, you don't need to destroy anything. You'll play through it. Apparently, you can replay it and get different, uh, choose different paths, the same way you would replay a Choose Your Own Adventure book. Um, but nothing gets destroyed, so you could repackage this and give it to a friend after you're done. There is a little FAQ available online. It basically doesn't seem like it's not saying anything that's not explained by the rules. So unless we need to refer to that, I'll just keep it out of the way. All right, let's read our first card. This is a game by Thomas DuPont and Arnold Arnaud Ladagasas. <laughs> Sorry, Ladagnus. You know, I feel like my reading is reasonable, but when I get to a word, I just, it's like my brain won't slow down and pronounce it, so it just comes up with anything. If you want to hear someone pronounce uh, stuff terribly, watch Rob Oren's videos. It's quite amusing sometimes. I think he probably has dyslexia, so maybe I shouldn't be making fun of him, but it's almost like every sentence has something mispronounced in it in an amusing way. Okay, so Card Aventura is a narrative game that lets you experience interactive adventures. Discover the five unique endings by playing again and choosing a different path. Do not mix up the cards in this deck, flip them only when told. Tells us who illustrated it, and then it says turn this card over. I guess while we've got one card, I'll give you this super close up. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this card over. We'll do it this way. You have just drawn your first urgent card. You should read it and resolve it completely. There's no need to take notes for your adventure or look for hidden elements in the cards. That's important because lots of games that use cards do have hidden elements in the cards that you have to spot. They're telling us we don't need to do that in this. The art is there for art's sake. We don't have to look for hidden codes or anything like that. After you've made the below choice, turn this card over and place it on top of the deck so the next cards remain hidden. After you've made 
the below choice turn this card over and put it on the top of the deck i mean we just saw this deck i guess it's saying we're gonna leave this as our draw deck with this on top of it all right now i do want to say something before we start this is a game whose the most the fun of this game is going through it the first time to seeing all the surprises if you intend think you might want to play this game yourself you should stop watching this stream now you can purchase this now for 12 dollars 15 bucks you can get it played on your own and then you can come back and watch the rest of this stream if you stay with us now you are going to have the surprise spoiled if you care about that stuff all right so we flipped it over we see a little uh lightning bolt so we know this is an urgent card we need to read it and resolve it all right so here are our choices we can read the rules of the game or begin our adventures if we're already familiar with the rules all right we're not familiar so we're going to draw card two it says after you made the bow choice turn this card over and place it on top of the deck so the next card remains hidden so i'm reading that to be like this so we're putting this aside we've drawn card two now Card two says, you have just drawn your first object card. Place it in front of one of the players. Remember, this is a one to six player game, but we're gonna, we're playing that, but mainly it's just a solo game with people discussing. This is an object card. It's got a hand, that means it stays up, I guess. Objects can be useful throughout the game. Be careful, the cards are double-sided. On the front of a card, the number is in a colored circle. That's that two in a colored circle. On the back is a black square. That's how we know front from back. Never turn a card over if the game does not tell you to do so. Now it says begin the adventure by drawing card three. I guess we'll do that. We'll draw card three. And this one stays up on the table. Note, when you draw an urgent card, you must resolve what it asks completely and right away before moving on unless you have been instructed to discard an urgent card leave it in place on the table clarification if you need to replace a card discard it and put the new one in the same place okay so this one says it's an object card so it stays on our table but we can put it aside it's just a reminder but we haven't seen what's on the back of it something may tell us to flip it over Okay, let's, try, let's take a look at card three. It's an urgent card. We must resolve it completely before continuing. It says Verdun, France, spring 1916. You are a French war correspondent and you've just witnessed the atrocities of a war which will remain etched in your memory. Thousands of men have fallen under shell bombardment, buried in the filthy trenches. It is here, deep in the shadows, that you discover a book that fills your head with light. Its author, Alexandra Dave Neal, speaks of an Eastern philosophy that leads to wisdom and serenity. On your return from the front, you convince your editor to send you to write about this extraordinary woman and about the farthest regions of the world. You begin to follow in her footsteps, secretly hoping that the journey will guide you towards inner peace. And perhaps, upon reaching the doors of Lhasa, the forbidden spiritual city, you will eventually chase away the demons that haunt you in the violent nightmares you have every night. Draw card four, and then turn this card over. All right, so let's do that. Let's draw a card four. It's an object card, so it stays in play. These are the nightmares we have. So I guess we're not recreating this voyage of Alexandra. We're following her as part of a story, following in her footsteps to learn more about Lhasa. Okay, we drew, drew a card and now we turned this one over. Crossing the Mediterranean Sea, the Suez Canal, the Red Sea, the Arabian Sea, it takes you nearly a month to reach the port of Colombo on the island of Ceylon. This island, off of the Indian coast and under British rule, is where Alexandra David Neal was last seen. Having been received by the British governor of the island, she gave the story of her journey to the local newspaper. 
the Ceylon Morning Leader. Now your editor is waiting impatiently for your articles. In return, he will send you cashier's checks to help boost your funds. He reminds you that the amounts he sends will naturally depend on the quality and originality of the material you provide. It says, draw card five, place it in front of you with the number two at the top. You start with two coins, okay? So here's card five. You can see this is going to track how much money we have. So we're putting that in front of us with the number two at top, meaning we have two coins. I did bring some metal coins if we want to use these instead. We'll just put that to remind us at a glance we've got two coins. It says, careful, if you go below zero, turn this card over. If we go below zero, don't know how you go below zero, but okay, if we go below zero, Something bad's going to happen. All right. Draw card six. Place it at the center of the table. Okay. That's card six. So here we are in Colombo. You can see it's part of a map. This looks like much like Seventh Continent. It's telling us what card is going to go north east and south card seven eight and nine i'm presuming all right so we're in we're at colombo all right so i'm going to put this at the center of the table we'll move this around maybe we'll put this off to the side so we're not tempted to look at it till we're told to we'll put this at the center of the table there's our nightmare which isn't doing anything but could be flipped so i'll put this nightmare over to the side here this we might need. We'll just put this over somewhere. Okay, card six, center of the table. If card two is visible, it is. It's this one. Turn it over and read it, and then discard this card. So remember, it's a square number on black. That means we've already, it means it's already been flipped. But card two, if it's visible, turn it over and read it. Okay, let's read it. and then discard this one. So I'm going to discard this one off to the side. Do says you've just drawn your first map card and it shows us an icon. That's this icon here. Place it in the middle of the table. Draw and read the cards for which there are numbers printed around the compass, 7, 8, and 9. Place the cards around the map card in the spots mark. So just as we thought, it's telling us to take card seven, put it here, card eight here, card nine here. All right, let's continue reading here. Place the cards around the map card in the spots denoted, which we've Done. It's going to be hard for you to guys to see everything. I can see that. See if we can't make it a little better. Okay, for now we can keep these cards here. Okay, so it says put them out. It says several action cards are now available. This feels a little bit like Mortem Medieval Detective, right? Where the cards came out, they had actions on them. We'll put this up out of the way. We don't need that. Okay, action cards have this gear. All players choose an action from the available actions and follow the instructions carefully. Once you've decided, choose a new action from those available. Just like Mortem Medieval Detective, actions available in cards. You're now familiar with four types of cards, the actions, maps, urgent, and object. The symbols lock and key will help you with packing the game away. Note, if an instruction tells you to turn over a map card, do not remove the cards already placed around it. Okay. This is an object card, so it would stay out for us to remind us how to play if we forget. But it sounds like we really don't need this card anymore. I'm going to put this way off. This one seems like we might need it. It's not been turned over yet. All right, let's take a look at what these cards are here. So there's Colombo, where we are, I guess. Can't do anything on this card, but we've got actions on these cards to the northeast and south. 
at the docks, we could take an action. We could leave for Darjeeling in the sea of in, in the north of India. We would discard all other actions, lose two coins, and flip this card. So if we decide to go this way on this branch of the story, these are no longer available to us and it costs us all our money. Or leave for Bombay in the west of India. Discard all other actions, lose one coin, replace this card with 28. Okay, but we'd still lose these two. Or we can go to the tavern. We can talk to the handful of modest Sri Lankan sailors. We just turn this card over. Or talk to the British soldiers returning from India, in which case we would draw card 10. It wouldn't be surprising if card 10 didn't also wipe this away. This one just turns over if we choose this, but I wouldn't be surprised if card 10 didn't make this action inaccessible. So I, it's probably we're going to do one of these two things and never be able to do the other. Or we can read the edition of the Ceylon Morning Leader where Alexandra wrote her stories. We search the archives for an article about Alexandra, but we lose a coin, and we flip this card. All right, the art is beautiful, very evocative, sort of cartoonish style. Pretty nice, actually. Pretty beautiful. These looks like the British soldiers are arguing. All right, so I find myself... Uh, already stressed out by having to make these choices let's see what the chat if anyone's made any suggestion no one's made a suggestion i don't want to lose my money so quickly although i do remember that our the introduction said he's going to send us money based on how good our stories are. What is our, our mission is to trace in her footsteps, get to Lhasa, and write stories about it. Okay, so we kind of have a goal to get to Lhasa, write stories. Annis votes for reading the newspaper. It's gonna cost us a dollar. Okay, but let's do it. Let's read the newspaper. So we're going to choose to do this. We lose a coin. Okay, let's see how this works. So I'm going to take a coin off here, but in the game mechanics, we just rotate this to show that there's a one up top. Maybe I'll put this over here. So we have one coin now, and we still have our nightmares. Turn this card over. Okay. It's an urgent card, which means we have to resolve it right away. You find the article detailing the journalist's meeting with Alexandra David Neal. In some appendices, there are quotes attributed to her, which give you an idea of the integrity of her character, as well as her particular style. You come across several that might be useful in the trials that await you. Here are her sayings. If it is cold, it is because you are looking where there is no heat. Courage is still the most secure of attitudes. Everything loses its horror when you face it head on. Neglecting the little things because you say you want to achieve greater ones is a coward's excuse. Whenever you ask someone for something, if you expect something from them, be prepared for disappointment. And then it says discard, discard. So it will go in a discard pile and we... I believe it, the game is telling us we're not allowed to re revisit it. So let's just remember her words of wisdom. If it's cold, it's because you are looking where there is no heat. I don't see how that helps us. Courage is the most secure of attitudes. Everything loses its horror when you face it head on. So she's saying face your fears head on. Neglecting the little things because you want bigger things is a coward's excuse. Whenever you ask someone for something... Whenever you ask someone for something, if you expect something from them, be prepared for disappointment. Well, how would you ask them for it then? Don't ask people for things? I don't know. Okay, so discard it. So we've spent one of our coins just to get some wisdom, which isn't very wise. And now, in fact, even if we wanted to, we could not 
And we could not go to Darjeeling. We don't have two coins, so we can't, can't go there anymore. Um, let's go to one of these places that don't cost money. We could talk to Sri Lankan sailors, or we could talk to the British soldiers returning from India. Yeah, let's talk to the Sri Lankan sailors. So turn this card over. Here we go. You make the acquaintance of Tharushi, a young Sri Lankan fisherman of Indian origin. After chatting briefly about his difficult livelihood as a sea fisherman, you explain what brought you here. He tells you that last year he took the person you are looking for to the port of Visakapatapatnam, Visakapatnam, on the Indian mainland, and that he can do the same for you at a minimal cost. He can transport you in his little boat wherever you'd like across the vast Indian Ocean and Bay of Bengal. He also encourages you to return to the center of town and not linger around the docks for too long as the soldiers in the English garrison are not known for their friendliness. It says, discard this card and turn card six over. Uh-huh. Okay, so let's just read this before we discard it. This guy, Tharushi, a Sri Lankan fisherman of Indian origin and says he took Alexandra to the port of Visakapnam on the Indian mainland. He can take us in his little boat across the vast Indian Ocean. That sounds a little dangerous. But he says, go to the center of town, don't linger. So we throw this away and we flip this card over. So you can see the map has changed now. Now that we know this information, now 11 and 12 are to the right of this. Okay, so this got discarded. We flipped this over, and now we have to fill this up with 11 and 12. So let's do that. 11 and 12 go here. All right, and then this map wants 13 and 14. So let's get those out, 13 and 14. Okay, so what's new here? We've got a new action we can set out with Tharushi toward the heart of India. We would lose our last coin and draw card 23. This feels like our, our boat could capsize. Okay, and now that we're back in town, however, we can travel around town. We can question the governor about Alexandra. We can join up with an expedition leaving the town. Interesting. I don't want to spend any more money. Other way around, the map doesn't fit. Oh. Yes, you're right. 11 is over here. 12 is over here. 13, 14. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, I see. This continues the map. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, we're not going to set off right away and spend our last coin. Surely we should do the things that are free first. How about we question the governor about Alexandra David Neal? It feels like maybe on our first playthrough, we're going to be getting historical information. All right. Shall we question the governor? Let's do it. Let's turn this over to question the governor. Sir John Anderson, the governor of the island, receives you, but only as gracious, graciously as his post obliges him to. He is even less gracious when it comes to his opinion of Alexandra David Neal, whom he bumped into a few months ago en route to who knows where. 
She, much like his own nephew, struck him as an eccentric with her passion for exotic exploration. He suggests that you visit the island's magnificent tea plantations, which he manages. He'd likely be flattered if you took an interest and may even be grateful. This says turn card 12 over and discard this card. Okay, so we've turned this card over and discovered more of the map. This one gets discarded and now 15 comes out. There's the tea plantation and it brings out 16 and 17. 16 goes here off the screen for you. 17 goes here. Let's see what we can do about this. We'll try to keep the stuff that we're involved in available in this close-up. And then when it can't fit, I'll have to switch to this screen, which is not as easy for you to read. So there's the tea plantation. And then we've got the owner's house, the plantation manager. We could talk to that person or go to the tea fields and explore the plantation ourselves. Any thoughts on where you'd like to go next? Jonathan wanted tea before we even found it. Jonathan says, for some reason, what the governor said feels like a philosophy. Aren't we all just bumping into each other's through life en route to who knows where? He may be grateful if we take an interest. That sounds like worth our time then. All right, so we should explore the tea plantation or meet the plantation manager. Seems like you should meet the manager before you start walking around their fields, doesn't it? So let's meet the plantation manager and turn this card over. Okay, so we've got it urgent. We must do something on this card before we continue. Can you guys read the text here or should I bring this to the center and close up while I read it? You meet Barbara Grant, a friendly and dynamic young woman who is very proud to give you a tour of her farming operation created by Samuel White Baker, the famous 19th century English explorer. The setting is enchanting, the stories are thrilling, and the tea your charming hostess gives you to sample is divine. You have enough material for an article about the plantation. Okay, do we want to write an article? Or maybe later. So we must make this decision now, but if we say maybe later, we just turn this back over and we can revisit it later. It feels like maybe we should write the art, we should walk the field before we write the article. What if, what if the locals have much worse things to say about it? Don't you think? If we write the article, this disappears. <laughs> Discard card 17, draw card 18. So I think we will... Anna says, I suspect we gain money by writing an article. I hope so. That's what I do want to write that article, but I want to visit the plantations before I write it. So I'm going to say maybe later to turn this card over, and then we'll take a walk down to the tea fields. Turn this card over. Walking across the fields, you come across the workers, nearly all women. They smile at you politely, but you notice that their working conditions are grueling. On the slopes of the hill, they pick tea leaves by hand under the gaze of a sinister foreman with a whip on his belt, who makes it clear that it would be best if you moved along. Despite the beauty of the location, you have plenty of material to write an article that exposes the reality of colonial exploitation. Oh boy. Now we're in a rough spot. <laughs> now we are in a rough moral spot. Yikes. All right, well, uh, yeah, this is a little tougher. This is what I was afraid of. This is, I've advocated for a while 
that games should lean on moral psychological choices to motivate tough decisions in these kinds of games even in the absence of a strategic decision and here we've got a perfect example of a conflict conflict between a strategic decision and a moral decision so we can write thrilling stories about the plantation hiding all the bad stuff about colonialism and we'll probably make some money or we can now write a story exposing the realities of colonial exploitation and likely not make any money it says but we can do so if we write the article with this card we would throw away the owner's house card draw a new card or we can say maybe later so now i could say maybe later that's fine but notice there's nothing else for us to do but leave town We've got the two articles we can write here. And then we could join up with an expedition leaving town, turn this card over. I don't remember us reading about an ex uh, expedition, but I guess it's assumed. Notice this, there's no, I don't love that as far as a rule thing go. This is how this was originally, right? Let's just talk about this from a rules perspective. This is how this was originally. 13 was here. 14 was here. We're told now to flip this. We flipped it, which brought stuff out here. But now notice there's nothing pointing to this location anymore. There's no 13. But nothing told us to get rid of it. So I'm assuming we keep it. But I don't know why that doesn't still have a 13 there. A bit troublesome but all of our options now are to leave or write one of these two newspaper stories we are from france Funk tiger says let's expose the colonial exploitation of the british all right, is everyone okay with that? I'm not worried about upsetting the plantation owner. I'm worried about not, not getting money that we need. All right, let's do it. Let's be courageous. All right. Let me see. Do I have a chat with the top view? I do. All right. Um we are going to revisit the tea plantation we're going to drink some tea before we expose this whole thing it's actually coffee so i think we're safe all right we're going to write the article exposing the realities of colonial exploitation don't forget france is doing lots of colonialism too so I don't think the French public is going to love hearing this article. Discard card 16. Okay, that's it. No more owner's house. Face, face down, so we never get to see that. Draw card 19. Discard this card. Okay, so 19... Seven, that card gets discarded. This card came out. It's an urgent card. It must be handled right away. Let's see what it says. From our correspondent in Ceylon. Bloody refreshment. When it's time for high tea at the ambassador's residence and you sip a cup of that precious liquid, face smug and little finger raised, Take good care you don't burn your tongue, because that's the only danger you risk. Whereas from dawn until dusk, shuffling across the plantations in Ceylon, where that tea is picked. Ceylon tea, that's a famous kind of tea. I just made the connection. The women experience many other hardships and a far less refined colonial reality. Your editor-in-chief is utterly delighted with this article and encourages you to pursue this approach. 
He immediately wires you a money order. Gain two money. Turn this card over. Okay. They did like the article. Your story unleashes the governor's wrath. Uh-oh. And he makes it clear that you risk betraying his confidence and spreading subversive ideas in the territory. At the same time, another man introduces himself to you discreetly, Armand de Souza, founder and editor-in-chief of the Ceylon Morning Leader. He read your article about the exploitation of local people and resources by the occupying power with great interest, and he appreciates your integrity. Speaking from his first-hand experience, Armand... Armand encourages you to tread cautiously with regard to discussing subjects that could attract trouble. He reveals that he met Alexandra David Neal a long time ago. He would be honored to introduce you privately to several friends of his for a friendly, informal meeting that evening at his house, on the crucial condition that you make quite sure you are not followed. Turn card 15 over and then discard this card. Okay. So card 15 is this one. We now get to turn this over, which is just an alternate version of the map, which puts a new card, 21, up here. Travel carefully to Armand de Souza's house. The new action, Armand de Souza. I don't know if that's a real person. All right, let's not forget, it told us to gain two coins, right? I should have done that right away. Gain two coins. So let's come back over here. Two coins brings us to two and then three. So we now have three coins. Now I do want to note that the FAQ does actually say something about coins. It says card five. This card shows the amount of gold coins you have available. If you ever find yourself with more than three gold coins, leave the card on three. So I guess it's saying you're not allowed to have more than three, although we did bend that rule if we want, since we have the metal coins. And then if you ever go below zero, you're broke, turn the card over. If, a car, if all available choices require you have, require money, you don't have a sufficient amount, then you're broke, turn it over and read the instructions. Okay. Maybe it gets you more money, so we shouldn't consider it the worst thing in the world okay but we've got three money if we ever gain more than three we'll have to decide if we want to limit ourselves to three all right so far so good we used her wisdom to be courageous and it paid off for us now that we've got three we could leave for darjeeling before we lose money or we could go to this house which i'm very curious about going to Sure, let's go to the house. All right. Armand de Souza's house. Let's turn it over. Correspondence with Dr. Silva. I love the art in this game. Who is the artist? Maybe now it pays. Normally I just skim over this, but uh, illustrations are Guillaume Vernon. And Jean Landar. These are going to be French artists. These French artists have this beautiful style. Armand de Souza welcomes you warmly into his house and introduces you to his family and an old friend, Wilmot Arthur de Silva, a notable figure on the island who is rumored to be destined for great things. After a delicious meal, including the famous Colombo chicken, you learn that Dr. Sorry, that de Silva is president of the Theosophical Society, among other things, and as such, he too knows Alexandra David Neal, a preeminent member of that global organization. Having made inquiries for you, D'Souza says he learned that Alexandra David Neal will be in the north of India, near Nepal, looking for a route to Tibet to reach Lhasa. As for De Silva, Impressed by your hard work at shining a light on the fight for independence, he proposes beginning a correspondence and, from a distance, trying to help you 
in your search for truth. That's great. And it's a hand card, an object card, so it stays out on the table. So maybe this correspondence with the Silva will come in handy for us in the future. That's a pretty cool nightmare card. Looks a little scary. What does it look like? Someone just a monster destroying a house or something. All right. So that correspondence may come in handy at some point. Put this card over 21. Okay, so that's just done. We've had this little experience with him and it's now out of the way. And now we're back to making a choice from one of our available choices. And he told us that she went in the north of India near Nepal. So that's interesting because. If you'll remember, the expensive Darjeeling is the north of India. Bombay is the west of India. And this guy, towards the heart of India, he thinks he can take us on his little fishing boat on the Indian Ocean. I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, this expedition is going on the Eastern Gate. I don't... That doesn't seem like it's going where we want. Jonathan Warner says, It looks like Armand D'Souza was a real newspaper editor. He wrote a book in the public domain called 100 Days in Ceylon Under Martial Law in 1915. You can find a PDF if interested. Nice. All right, so... My suggestion, I think, is that we pay the $2, go to North India. That seems like where she's it, where she is, if we're trying to retrace her steps. I mean, I do want to get in the small boat to see what happens. This one, I see no reason for us to go here. This seems like it's Eastern Gate. I don't know. Maybe you can... I don't see how you can get where she is on the Eastern Gate, to be honest. Are you ready to go north? Okay. And it says, let's go north. We got the money. All right. So this is a big moment. What we'll do is we'll make this action, then we'll take a little break. So we're going to choose all of our actions are leaving. Although, wait, let's pause for a second. This one may not be leaving. This may just be on a little voyage. It doesn't say to get rid of all cards. So this could be a side trip that we could take in addition to going north. But I don't, it doesn't feel like we really need this. We're flush with cash. We could gain some experience. Get a cup of tea, a coffee, but feels a little risky. We don't even know anything about this. We don't know who's going. We don't know. All right, so we're not going to do that. We're not going to get in this small boat. We're going to the north of India. Discard all other actions. That's these two. They go away. Lose two coins. So this goes to two and one. And then turn this card over. Okay, look, we went in this boat to North India. It says to bring out card. 28, which is here, and place it, am I reading that right? Does that say 28? Because it's not a map card. It says 28 comes out. Uh-oh. Let's read this before we take our break, because this looks a little scary. <laughs> Pondicherry. Madras, Calcutta. You travel for days before initially, before finally arriving in Darjeeling. There, English soldiers inform you that in view of recent worrying events of rebellion, the region of Sikkim is being placed under curfew. From now on, it is forbidden for any foreigners to be there without imperial permission. Non-British Westerners are being assigned rooms under strict surveillance in the only hotel that remains open. Now, if you have the military badge or safe conduct thing, which we don't, 
We don't even know about these things. Then we read this. If not, in spite of your protest, the British soldiers place you under house arrest in the hotel. Replace this card with 50. Okay, replace means this gets discarded and 50 comes out. Maybe we would have gotten that if we had gone on a little expedition or met with the British, talked with the British soldiers. Yes, Drunk Tiger says they, they recognized us for that article and punished us. Okay, so new cards come out. 53, which goes there. 52, which comes here. And 51, which goes here. All right, let's see if we can't bring these down. Doesn't seem like we really need this map below now. So we ended up in Darjeeling, another famous tea that you can get. We can go to the hotel. We can spend a coin. We have one to try to get the manager to smuggle us out. We can talk to the Europeans also in the hotel with us. Flip this card over. Or we can try to persuade the guards to let us go. Look at that beautiful artwork. Really outstanding. I wonder if all the games in this series have this beautiful art. The, there's nothing for us to do here. I'm tempted to just move, pile these up and move them out of the way. They, the, unfortunately, some of them don't have... You can see how to reassemble them from the map, but I think it's unfortunate that they didn't decide that somehow when you flip these cards, the connections aren't specified so that it's hard to reconstruct it. So we'll just leave these out for now. Out of the way. All right, so here's what we'll do. We'll take a little, uh, eight, we'll take our, I guess we'll take our full eight minute break. We'll come back and we'll decide what to do from Darjeeling. So far, it's very engaging. I'm enjoying it more than I expected. So I hope you're enjoying it as well. I'll see you in eight minutes and we'll continue.
Okay, we're back. You're watching Copper 2. We're playing Lhasa, part of Ventura Lhasa. We found ourselves in North India in Darjeeling, but restricted by the British. Is it by the British that are restricting us? English soldiers, yes. And so now we've got to decide what to do. 
As a little aside here, while we check in with the chat, I had an idea yesterday. We've been playing these uh, Sherlock Holmes consulting detective games where I've been using papers to cover up everything but the paragraph that I'm reading. And I've uh, talked a couple of times about, wouldn't it be nice to have some sort of physical device that could do that? That if you were reading something, you could sort of use like Etch-a-Sketch things to cover up everything but the paragraph you were reading. And then in this game, we're in this situation where I'd really like to show you a close-up of whatever card we were reading, whatever new cards came out on the table. And I actually had an idea. And I was thinking, what if I wrote an, a plugin for OBS that would let me take a shot, like this shot of the table, and could use a little visual recognition to detect markers like this that I could put anywhere and would automatically zoom the view to show whatever was inside that area. So that if I was reading a paragraph and I wanted you only see that paragraph, I would just do this. And then OBS, the broadcasting system that's, that's, um, doing the video processing, sending this out, would then crop into that region, zoom it in to take up the whole screen so that I could just go like this and it would show this on the screen zoomed in. So that would have two effects. It would crop out whatever I didn't want to see, but also automatically zoom in to whatever region on the table I wanted you to be able to see. I could do it manually if I had a mouse and were zooming in on a region. So that would be another way to do it. Use a mouse and on the screen. But I'm curious. I don't know. It'd be some substantial work. Uh, but it could be done. So, okay. Sorry. Just something I've been thinking about. Uh... Okay, what shall we do here? There's a bunch of ways that could be done. And could it be done fast enough? I'm not sure. Okay. So Anna had a good idea, which is let's talk to the locals, the other people can find, and then maybe we can get enough information to figure out whether we can persuade the guards or pay someone to let us out. So we're going to go... Oops. We're going to go talk to the other Europeans confined to the hotel. So it says turn card 52 over. So let's do that. You meet Heinrich Friedman, a young German pilot. He tells you he has deserted the Air Force in his biplane and having crossed all of Eastern Europe in, and the Middle East in stages, landed here a few months ago. Because of his nationality, the British forces have made him stay at the hotel until the end of the war. Since the outcome of this conflict is most uncertain, he is trying desperately to escape and to continue his journey, perhaps as far as Tibet, which is where we want to go, to Lhasa in Tibet, where he may find a modicum of the freedom he has so stubbornly refused here. Tonight, he will need a helper to mislead the English who watch over him so that he can get back to his plane, which is hidden not far from here. So we can agree to help him escape. Replace this card with 48. Or refuse to help him for now. Turn this card over. So there'd be no harm in saying, well, let's just refuse for now. However, the only other two options would possibly take us out of here. So, if we're going to help him at all, it seems like we got to do it now. Or I guess we could say, well, let's try to get bribe our way out, and then if we can't, we'll go to him. 
but remembering our advice on that card we read about Alexandra, she she was like, go straight for it, be courageous. So, and we care about writing stories, so it feels like we should help him escape. But it could make our life more difficult. I don't think he's going to let us, he, I don't think he's taking us with him. He wants us to distract the guards so he can be get back to his plane. I don't think he's taking us, but maybe he'll give us a choice too. I think we got to be bold. That's the way we're playing this game today. So we're going to agree to help him escape. But he deserted his Air Force. All right, let's try it. Agree to help him escape. Replace this card, 52, with 48. Okay. That's 48. Uh-oh. You gather your things quickly, meet Heinrich discreetly, and board his biplane. Oh, I guess we are planning to go with him. As it takes off, you see English military vehicles below you driving toward the secret runway. You were very lucky that you weren't all arrested. Flying over... Flying over the rocky foothills in the first glimmers of day is a sublime experience. Then you realize you have forgotten the satchel containing all of your money. So here you are with no resources en route to an unknown destination, placing your future completely into the hands of fate, which here they call... Karma. Heinrich lands his plane on the eastern border of Tibet in the province of Shigatsi. This is as far as he can go. Before he turns back, he wishes you the best of luck and hopes that the war will be over soon. Discard the pass of safe conduct. We don't have the military insignia and the sacred medallion if you have them, which we don't. Discard all action cards. Draw card 42, then turn this card over. Now, it says we lost all our, left all our money, but it doesn't tell us to actually get rid of the money. I'm guessing when we flip this over, it is going to, but we're going to follow the rules. We don't have any of those things. We're discarding our actions. I like this. Was, if you had to pick a way to get out of here, that would that's the best one. Draw card 42. And okay, here's card 42. And then that's it. So it says draw card 42. This is an urgent, so I think we must do this first before we turn this card over. It says you have no more need of any money, but must now manage the power of your destiny or karma. Discard card five. That's it. No more money. That's discarded. We don't need any money in the game. We're in Tibet. No more money. Unlike money, if you reach zero karma, your journey isn't over. However, you cannot make any more choices which would require karma, as you can't have negative karma in this game. Turn this card over, place it in front of you with the number one at top. Okay, so now we have karma instead of money. Face up. Here we go, we've got one karma. All right, now we can return here. Turn this card over. Uh, turn this card over. Just trying to see if twice this card 52. So we've got this new map. I don't think we need this anymore. I'm going to take these cards here that are part of where we came from in Darjeeling and just put them in a different pile because this seems like all we need for now here's our plane it wants card 55 so he's flown off left us here here you are at the gateway to tibet in a landscape of breathtaking beauty 
At the front, at the foot of an almost black mountain, contrasting with the white snow on the glacier, green meadows stretch as far as the eye can see around an immense turquoise lake. If card 49 is visible. All right, so do we need to, let me bring out the cards that, these were the cards that were visible when we last did it. Okay, it wants, it says 49. Well, card 49 isn't visible. I don't even know if we ever even got it out. So we're not doing any of this. If not, on a hill, you notice some long colored flags. Beyond a forest, you make out narrow columns of smoke, surely coming from a village. Further off, on the shores of the lake, you spot the roofs of a little monastery. Then turn this card over. So let me just check in with the chat. I don't believe 49 ever came out. It's not in our discard pile. We never, and it's not in any of the cards that are on the table, so no. Okay. So I can still put these away. Turn this cart over. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. The Tibetan flags. And now it wants card 56. The journey of the last few days has genuinely exhausted you. Swamped by fatigue, you sink into what you hope will be a healing sleep. Unfortunately, your old nightmares come back to torment you. You wake, barely rested and still feverish, to visions of the faces of lost comrades, screams in the dark, exploding shells, and the floating shadows of death. After a sleep haunted by nightmares of your past, you open your eyes to a new day filled with renewed potential and resume your journey. On the summit of the hill, attached to the big multicolored flags, you notice strips of printed fabric blowing in the wind. You surprise a very young man, head shaved and wearing the traditional red tikivara who is attaching a new piece of fabric. There's a key here. I'm not sure what that's supposed to tell us. We were never told. It's just for maybe for arranging the cards back. Replace card 56 with 57. That means we discard 56 and we just bring out 57. It's an urgent. We must decide now. Knowing a few scraps of English, he introduces himself to you. His name is Lop Tsang. He explains that he had to flee a neighboring monastery when it was besieged and looted by a cruel Chinese warlord. And now he is all alone. You ask him to travel some of the way with you, but he explains politely that he must finish writing his prayers for each of his lost brothers first, before the wind carries them to the gods. After several hours, you understand that the ritual needs to last as long as the young monk's profound pain. In the icy wind and the encroaching night, you ask yourself if your presence here is a help or a hindrance to Lopsang in his ritual of silent prayers. So we can stay here for the night, and we would lose a karma, our only karma. Or we can start looking for Alexandra again. That's a tough choice. I'd love to get rid of my nightmares, too. I'm trying to remember Alexandra's words of wisdom in the beginning. Stay here for the night. He knows a little English. He fled a neighboring monastery. He's all alone. He must stay and write his prayers, and it's going to last until he finishes mourning his brothers. I mean, honestly, I'm not inclined to... Like, I think people should, let, should grieve on their own. I, I'm not... The kind of, I, I don't believe you, I don't believe everyone needs company. 
it's okay to be alone. So I'm not sure I agree with Drunk Tiger that it sounds like we should leave. But um, I feel like he's not asking us to stay. Did we have to persuade him to travel? You ask him to travel some of the way. He must finish his prayers. All right, let, let him do his prayers alone. Let's go. Start looking for Alexandria. If he wanted to come, he'd come, right? We're like imposing ourselves on him. Turn this card over. Here we go. We're going to look for Alexandra on our own. Okay, so it's just a map. And now 60 comes out. Put this off up somewhere out of the way. 60 says... Before reaching the forest, a wide river emptying into the lake blocks your way. The bridge across it seems to have been destroyed recently. An old lady is desperate that she will never be able to get to the other side and back to her village. According to her, the other bridge is a long way away and her old legs wouldn't be strong enough to get her there with her many overloaded bags. She begs you to carry her to the other side. The current looks quite strong and the water is icy cold. So you're not sure if you could even get across on your own without difficulty. You notice sacred decorations and statuettes sticking out of her bags, no doubt from a nearby monastery. So she's either rescuing them from a nearby monastery or <laughs> stealing them. We can get into the freezing water to help the woman. Or we can move on without helping the woman. Well, I mean, if it's all about karma, we can't very well leave this old woman to die. We gotta, we gotta help her, right? Surely she's not stealing these. Surely she's rescuing them. But I don't like that we don't have any objects to help us. All right, but let's get into the water and help carry her to the other side. It's not that, Anna says it's a strange request. It's not really a strange request. It's just, uh, I have to assume she's not stealing these. And we can't help her to the other bridge. Our only choice is either get into the freezing water and help her or move on. All right, let's help her. Drunk Tiger says, this sounds dangerous. Yeah, it does sound dangerous. But uh, we're here for adventure. Here we go. We're getting into the freezing water to help the woman. So replace this card with 61. Does everyone... Sounds like the rest of you don't want to get into this cold water. Oh boy, <laughs> looks like we got another challenge here. After these events, replace this cover 61. After these events, you plunge into the forest composed of century old. I don't, I don't get it. Did I, it's my glasses get me the wrong card? No, it says replace this card with 61. So I replaced it with 61. 61 says, I don't know, it, it seems like. We helped her. That was weird. Now we've met a tiger. I don't quite get it. Get into the freezing water to help the woman. Replace this card with 61. So we did that and not, it didn't tell us what happened? That's confusing, isn't it? There's something I'm not getting? Something I'm doing wrong? We help. We got into the prison where to help her, and that's it, huh? Seems like, is it wrong the other way? No. All right, well. After these events, you plunge into the forest, 
So after the events of helping that woman, which apparently was so boring that it didn't even have a description, you move forward on a soft carpet of needles in the shadow of these green, red, and gold giants, a huge organic cathedral. The magic of this place and time, and time is suddenly broken by a noise, a crack followed by a low growl, as an imposing and majestic white tiger appears at the edge of a clearing. He stops and looks intently at you. For a few moments, you are transfixed by this vision. Held between disbelief, terror, and fascination. Is it a trick of your imagination? The tiger seems to be seizing you up, too. It seems he can sense your fear, or on the other hand, your inner calm. He shifts between wanting to attack and being willing to let you go. Now you must turn around in your path or appeal to your karma, karma to overcome this test. Okay, what if we are unconscious? Like, what if we're having a full hallucination under the water? What monastery? What's happening? I think, I think we're, I think we're, uh, we're unconscious. I think we're unconscious. That's the only explanation. It's either a bug or we're unconscious and dying. So we got into the freezing water to help the woman. And all of a sudden we're in the middle of this story where we can move towards the tiger or go back and head toward the monastery, which we don't know what they're talking about. So I think it's on purpose. It's a wonderful moment of confusion. You plunge into the forest, century old pines and spruces. Notice where we are. Notice where we are. There's no forest here. You move forward on a soft carpet of needles in the shadow of these green, red, and gold giants, a huge organic cathedral. The magic of this time and place suddenly broken by a noise, a crack followed by a low growl as an imposing and majestic white tiger appears at the edge of the clearing. He stops and looks intently at you. You're transfixed by the vision. Is it a trick of your imagination? The tiger seems to be sizing up too. It seems he can sense your fear. Or on the other hand, your inner calm. He shifts between wanting to attack and being willing to let you go. Okay, so we are in... That's right. So the chat is coming to the same view as I have. Maybe check the FAQ. I'll check the FAQ, but I don't think there's anything about this. No, there's nothing important in the FAQ. I think we are having a little vision because we've gone under the water or passed out or whatever. And I think we don't go back, we move towards the tiger. That's what I think. Our inner calm, we're going to move towards the tiger. We're going to lose our one karma, but I think this is it. And I think it's not a bug, it's just a lovely moment. Okay, so we're going to move towards the tiger. So we're going to lose our one karma. Which brings us to zero karma. Was there, were we supposed to keep the card that had the instructions about the karma? I forget what it said. You can't, we can't lose karma below zero. So now we're in a bit of a trouble. We have no karma to spend. So if we ever get into something where we need to spend karma, we don't have it, we would lose it. Now we're going to draw card 65. Here we go. Now we're going to find out if it was a bug in the game or if this was just a cool moment. Here we go. Oh boy. Seems like a bug. You approach and, as carefully as possible, try to walk around the animal. He scrutinizes the tiniest of your moment, movements, then straightens up 
and with his huge mouth wide open lets out a long powerful roar everything around you suddenly becomes strangely silent a moment of truth in which you feel your heart racing and the animal seems to sense the blood now beating strongly in your veins he licks his lips and roars even more impressively as he approaches you menacingly so now we've got simply the monastery to go back so we've just thrown away a karma if we go back to the monastery it just does the same thing if we had gone back to the monastery here so all this did is make us throw away a karma if we had two karmas now which we have none we could turn over this card so i'm really confused what happened uh, Drunk Tiger says, maybe the options were swapped. Maybe the back of the card was Help the Woman. I looked at that. I checked. Um, so I looked at the back of card 60. It said, get into the freezing water, replace it with 61, or move on without helping the woman, change it, turn it over. So I turned it over to see if maybe that was reversed, but it says you go on your way. So this card is actually, uh, it is, if we didn't help the woman, we would turn over this card. So that's not a mistake. It's just very confusing that when we replaced it, we got this. After these events, I don't see any other... Uh, okay. Very strange. Uh, but now we've thrown away a karma, and we can't do this one, so we have to do this one. This one says, turn over card 61 and discard this card. So, we t go back and head towards the monastery. What monastery? We don't know. It's come out of nowhere. What's happened? Is this the problem? Is that not 60? Is that what I did wrong? No, that says 60. So that was 60. Turn this card over. 57. Hold us to bring out 60. Replace this with 61. Is that... Where is 56? So... I'm just retracing our steps. 56 says replace this card with 57. 57 came out. Start looking for her. Looks like we did everything right to me. Sorry. Let's go. If we retrace our steps, let's just retrace our steps. So, this says, we, we gather, we, t we went in a plane with him. Discard, pass of safe conflict, discard all the other actions, draw card 42, turn it over. Okay, 42 is karma. It says, turn this card over, put it in front of you, start with number one. Okay, there's number one. Then this map says 55 on it, so we put out 55 this way. Just rewinding everything. 55 says if 49 is visible, do stuff. It's not. Otherwise, on a hill we notice some colored flags. Is there any way that 49 should have been visible? No. Okay. On a hill we see colored flags. Beyond a forest you make out narrow columns of smoke coming from a village. Further off on the shores of the lake, you spot the roofs of a little monastery. Okay, so we do see a monastery. Then we flip this over. This tells us to bring out 56, which is this card. The journey has exhausted us. We wake from our nightmare. 
we see the guy doing the flags. It says replace this with 57. There's 57. He's Lop Sung. He wants us to mourn with him. We want it to mourn with him. We decide if it's help or hindrance. We decide to move on. So we flip this card over. We get a map piece. That tells us to bring out card 60, which is here. Before reaching the forest, a wide river emptying into the lake. Okay, so it is a forest. Before reaching the forest, a wide river emptying into a lake blocks your way. There's the old lady. All right, so I guess there is a forest here. Current looks strong. We could get across. We're not sure we could even do it by ourselves. We get into the water to help the woman replace this card 60 with 61, which is here. We saw the tiger. We lost a karma. We draw, drew card 65. You approach as carefully as possible. Try to walk around him. Everything around you suddenly becomes strangely silent. A moment of truth in which you feel your heart racing. The animal seems to sense the blood now beating strongly in your veins. He licks his lips and roars even more impressively as he approaches you menacingly. Continue forward. We don't have go back and head towards the monastery. All right. So Anna was saying, let's just, uh, let's rewind. But I, I don't think we're allowed. I think we should stick with the rule in case it's important. We spent our karma trying to get past the tiger. It didn't work. Now it says turn card 61 over and discard this card. Okay. All right. So here we are. Again, I do not like this system where you can't recreate the map. But now it says bring out card 62. So we just wasted a karma. That was pretty depressing. But And uh, Drunk Tiger says, I think it makes sense. They just didn't describe the events to us. That was very disorienting. I don't like it. All right. The men who opened the door are armed mercenaries, and you realize they are the ones who besieged the Tibetan monastery. This is, again, this game feels like it's missing explanations. All of a sudden, the men who opened the door... We approach a monastery, We the door gets opened. Okay, it just feels like missed step. They're armed mercenaries. You realize they are the ones who besieged the Tibetan monastery. They push you with their spears to face their chief, one of the most hostile. All right, so here we are. We've walked to the monastery. They push you with their spears to face the chief, one of the most hostile and despotic warlords. In Chinese, he shouts orders at you that you don't understand. He sizes you up for a long time and discusses your fate with his men. You sense he's trying to work out the pros and cons of randomly killing a Westerner. He calls one of his men who understands some rudimentary English to question you. You explain that you are a French journalist en route to Lhasa. Visibly confused, your response receives a wave of laughter, which transforms rapidly into contempt. The mercenaries drag you to a basement of the temple and shut you in a cellar. cellar. Turn this card over. Without any notion of time or space, your body and spirit start to weaken. Only a trickle of melted snow that occasionally runs down the walls prevents you from dying of thirst. After what seems like an eternity, you become so weak that even sitting is too great an effort for you. Lying on the ground at the end of your strength, you have a sudden vision. A fantastical figure appears before you, his face reminding you with horror of the corpses you saw in the trenches at Verdun. It is your own nightmare that has come to life to confront you. Draw card 63, discard this card. 
I'm starting to get a little bit of a vibe of time stories, choose your own adventure thing, where like you can't know the right thing to do the first time you encounter it, but you'll know not to do it next time. So maybe the replay will be more enjoyable knowing the right things to do. Anna says it was weird. We helped this woman and she didn't even say thanks and the tiger didn't eat us. Now we're in prison. All right, so we drew card 60. Draw card 63, discard this card. Okay, here's 63. If you have the vision card, we do not. If not, you do not confront the creature and let it engulf you. Your nightmares drag you back into the clutches of despair. Turn this card over. A thirst for the world. This <laughs> does not bode well. You emerge from this experience destroyed, body and spirit broken. You discover that you were found unconscious by the side of the road on the outskirts of a village. Subsequent events are lost in a fog of confused memories. You sense that you are being cared for, fed, carried. Once back in Europe, you learn that the war has recently ended. I feel it sounds like our game's over here. Once back in Europe, you learn that the war has recently ended. In a world free from horror, finally liberated from your inner demons, you rediscover the meaning and spice of life. After this rebirth, your thirst for freedom, travel, and discovery seems greatly increased, if not insatiable. You begin a career as a globe-trotting reporter. You meet many people and cultures, and your articles never cease to defend humanism and the search for peace which ultimately brings you closer than ever to the philosophy of Alexandra David Neal and to the mythic values taught in Lhasa. Draw card 70. Congratulations, you have completed your adventure. There are five different endings. Make a note of each ending you reach below. Replay, making different choices to discover all the endings. Note, if you get any cards with lock or key in the course of your game, you have unlocked new gaming options for your next adventure. Well, we did get a key one, but it got discarded. Turn this card over. If you want other players to... In, uh, Enjoy the adventure from the beginning. Reset the game by sorting all cards in ascending order by their numbers, flipping them to the side with the small dot in the lower left. And so turn this card over. Attention, you've reached the last card of the game. Putting the game away. Gather together all the cards on the table, including the discard pile. Turn over all cards of the black square. If any cards have a key, turn them over. If any cards have a lock, do not turn them over. Reassemble the whole deck, ordering the cards from 1 to 70. Tip to help put the cards in order, you can arrange the cards by their colored circles first. If you're ready to relive your adventure with different choice, you are ready to relive your adventure. I don't understand this comment here. If you get, get any cards depicting a key or lock in the course of your game you've unlocked new gaming options for your next adventure what does that so this was the card we got with the key i don't understand what this is saying it wants us to put everything back but it's also saying if you get any cards with key or lock in the course of your game, you've unlocked new gaming options for your next adventure. What does that mean? When you put it away, if you have any cards with the key, turn them over. I see. I guess it's saying, okay, I guess it's saying that when we visit this card again, we're going to encounter it on this side. Aha. Okay, that's kind of cool. So it was discarded this way, but the next time we do it, 
the game is going to be a little bit different. Okay, that's pretty cool. That was a very weird ending with the tiger thing. Not entirely satisfying with the tiger. Um, whether we had lost that last karma or not, we were going to be kept in that prison. The only way to get out is if we have the vision card. It sounds like we, it sounds like we sort of got to to bet away prematurely. <laughs> like it did not intend for us to get there without lots of stuff. We made too direct a route or something. All right, let's um, put it away and then figure out if we want to play again. So it says putting the game away, gather all the cards on the table, flip them over so that it's all circles on the front, the front of the cards with the dot in the bottom left in numerical order. Um, maybe before we do this, though, we should discuss our thoughts. <laughs> um, Anna says, I think we shouldn't have arrived by plane, or yes, we didn't do enough stuff beforehand. It does feel like we got, we got to the it felt like that tiger might be like the thing you do right near the end. We were not anywhere prepared for it. I was enjoying it quite a bit until that moment where we helped the woman across the icy lake and it it seemed like there was a bug in the game where it didn't resolve that. It didn't tell us what happened. It sounded like we were going to get injured and all of a sudden it just said nothing's happened and put us in a weird situation that looked sounded like we were dreaming or delusional. It was very confusing. Um, and I don't like how the maps are not always have the right number so you can reconstruct it at any point. But other than that, I love the art. I'm, en I'm enjoying this way of telling a branching choose your own adventure. And I'd be willing to play again and just go through our previous choices more quickly. Let's put everything away, remembering. And I like this idea. It's confusing, but I like this idea that we flip that key over. All right, so let's sort everything properly. I would be willing to play it again if you guys want to play it again. Try to make different decisions. Um, okay, where's our thing about putting things away? So I've got our discard. Gather get all the cards on the table, including the discard pile, and then we're going to turn them all over to the circles. As long as it's not a key. It is the one that's a key I'm flipping over. So just to show you, remember that almost always the circles are on the front and squares on the back, but the key card is a circle on both things. It says there's a little dot on the initial setup card. So if we wanted to give this to a friend and reset the game completely, we would put it on this side. But since we're, it's a key and we're replaying it, we flip it over. So that's going to be different. Let's see what card that was. So this was, this was where we meet the guy who's mourning. We don't not allowed to see what he what happens there. Five. Is that the only key that we got? I think so. Yep. 
Yes. Okay. So let's just put everything away. Eight, nine, fourteen. You guys should be thinking about what you want to do differently. Five, seventy. Okay, so that's everything there with the key flipped over and now reintegrating it here. And 13, 14, 15, 17. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, eight, twenty-one. Can we skip the whole bunch ahead? Two. All right, so a little bit of work to reassemble after you're done, but not so bad. And then this is the last card. Front. All right, and did we need to record what our, did we remember what our ending was? We don't, but we'll just put our first ending. So for Lhasa, on eight. 17, 8, 18, 22. We got the ending at Chinese warlord prison basement. And our, our nightmare killed us. Or at least ruined our body until we were rescued. Nightmare ended us. What number was it? We don't. We didn't write it down. 60 something. All right. So let's check in with the chat and see what everyone wants to do. And it says, great art, interesting idea until the tiger. It was a good story. Uh, if we talk to the soldiers at the beginning, they might give us the security badge. We could try to do everything differently just to see the variations. I kind of like that idea. Let's do things completely differently and see what happens. All right. So what we'll do is we'll take an eight minute break. We'll come back and we will re begin our adventure again a little more quickly. And we're going to do everything differently and we'll see what happens. So I'll see you in eight minutes.
Okay, we're back. You're watching Call for Two. We're going to try our second playthrough now of Lost. Uh, that last playthrough it seemed like it was going great until all of a sudden we were thrown off kilter by the tiger and ended up in the bottom, in the basement of a Chinese warlord. Here we go. We'll play this again till we get to an end, and then we'll give our give our thoughts. The tiger has showed up in the. The tiger has showed up in the chat to say hello and apologize. <laughs> um, so let's play this game differently. We're going to make different choices. The first one, we were sort of all about helping people. I think this time, and getting to Tibet as quickly as possible. I think now, let's go at it like we're adventuresome people. We're just out for adventure for ourselves. Chad Minnick, one of my friends here, has recognized my shirt, the Death Note shirt. All right, here we go. We're going to replay this, but make different decisions. Turn this card over. Okay, so do we want to read the rules of the game? No, we can skip it. So we're just going to skip right ahead to card three. And when we get a card that we've read before, Four, I'll just uh, read it quickly. Uh, Verdun, France, spring 1915. You are a French war correspondent. You've just witnessed the atrocities of war, which will remain etched in your memory. We read this before. So a war, we're a war correspondent. We found a book that filled our head with imagination. It's, a, it's by Alexander David Neal. Talking about Buddhism, we've decided to follow her in her footsteps. The editor is going to pay us to write stories. Hopefully, we will retrace her steps, um, hoping the journey will guide us to inner peace. And perhaps upon reaching the doors of Lhasa, the forbidden spiritual city, you'll eventually chase away the demons that haunt you in the nightmares you have every night. Let's draw a card four. That's our nightmare, you will remember. 
this nightmare hurt us uh at the at the end of our last mission when we were down at the bottom of the chinese warlord's basement we had this nightmare we didn't have a vision card to overcome it we suffered then we turn this card over crossing the mediterranean sea the suez canal the red sea takes you nearly a month to reach the port of colombo on the island of ceylon this island off the Indian coast under British rule is where Alexandra David Neal was last seen. Having been received by the British governor of the island, she gave the story of her journey to the local newspaper, the Ceylon Morning Leader. Now your editor is waiting impatiently for your articles. In return, he will send you cashier's checks to help boost your funds. He reminds you that the amounts he sends will naturally depend on the quality and originality of the material you provide. So we're in for adventure. It says draw card five, put it with two up front. So we've got two gold coins, which we'll just mark here. Draw card six, place it at the center of the table. That's our map. If card two is visible, that was the rule cards, turn it over and read it, otherwise, we didn't need the rules card other and then we discard this card so there's our discard pile here's our map here's our money and our nightmare map comes out it reminds us when a map comes out we fill out the adjacent places marked here so to the north is seven to the east is eight and south is nine okay so here we are starting the game off last time what did we do? We started by searching the archives for an article about Alexandra David Neal. She gave us some words of wisdom about being courageous when we looking for warmth. We're look, if we get cold, we're not looking for warmth in the right place. Then we went to the tavern and talked to the Sri Lankan sailor who offered to take us on a boat across the Indian Ocean. So if we're doing everything differently, we and then we went to Darjeeling. So we could go right now to Bombay. We could talk to the British soldiers. I think we talk this time we're going to forget about this. We don't need her words of wisdom anymore. Although, yeah, let's go to the British soldiers returning from India. Shall we? Okay, draw card 10. You try and mingle with a group of soldiers who have filled their hours of leave with copious drinking. You realize pretty quickly you're not winning them over. They openly mock your froggy accent. We're French. An officer even grabs you, accusing the French army of incompetence and cowardice in the face of the German invasion back in Europe. Fists up, he dares you to show your courage and fight him as the others look on shouting and laughing. We can buy a round of drinks to lighten the mood, or challenge the English soldier. All right, well, I'm not wasting my money on trying to buy these British soldiers drinks. So, I think we fight. Turn this card over. You defend your honor bravely, but it is impossible for you to get the upper hand. Under the withering gaze of the English owner, the soldiers throw you out of the tavern with a firm warning never to come back. You make your way back to the center of town with a military badge you tore off the soldier's uniform in the melee as your only reward. So we got ourselves a military badge by fighting the soldiers. We replace card 8 with card 12. That means eight gets discarded. And we've got a new object. We can sell this object at any time to gain a goal. We know from our previous adventure, though, that this actually might be checked. The game asks us, do you have a military badge? So whether we want to sell it will depend on whether we really need the money. Otherwise, we'd like to hold on to it. So we'll just put that up here. 
Okay, this new map card came out. So 13 goes down here and 14 goes up here. So we've been here before. Here are the choices we remember. We can talk to the governor or we can go on this expedition. Was the governor the one? He doesn't like Alexandra David Neal. Um, I can't remember if there were any other consequences and options talking to him. Was, I think this is the one, was this the one that got us the plantation? Yeah, he tells us he's proud of the plantation. We could go to the plantation and then write the article about colonial stuff or the tea plantation. So the only question to me is whether we immediately go on this expedition or whether we pursue this route. Should we pursue this route and write the article about the tea plantation first before we go on this route? I think we should. So let's turn this over. Sir John Anderson, the governor of the island, receives you, but only as graciously, graciously as his post obliges him to. He is even less gracious when it comes to his opinion of Alexandra Dave Neal, whom he bumped into a few months ago en route to who knows where. She, much like his own nephew, struck him as an eccentric with her passion for exotic exploration. He suggests he visit the island's magnificent tea plantations, which he manages. He'd be flattered if you took an interest and might even be grateful. So it says flip over card 12. And we discard this card. That brings out the new location on the map, which is here. Which brings out this location and this location okay so we've been here before last time we were here we visited both the tea fields and the owner's house and we decided to write an article about the exploitation of the workers in the tea fields so now our choices are to leave all this behind us and just go to the eastern gate or do we want to go here and write a friendly article about the about colonialism I think since we're doing everything differently, we should see what happens when you write the article about colonialism. So we go here. We meet Barbara Grant, a friendly and dynamic young woman who's very proud to give you a tour of her farming operation created by Samuel White Baker. Settings enchanting, stories are thrilling, and the tea your charming hostess gives you to sample is divine. You have enough material for an article about the plantation. So now we're going to write the article with praise for the plantation instead of the locals this is a little scary but we're going to do it so we discard card 17 so remember this was the nice the article about the exploitation of workers instead card 18 comes out and then we discard this card so we've written an article about the plantation let's see what happens from our correspondent in Ceylon, the magical land of tea. Emerald green hills as far as the eye can see, where the luxuriant plantations have positioned themselves like the steps of a heavenly staircase, filling the air with fragrant perfume. This is the first gift that strikes your senses when you discover the amazing sight of Nuwara Elia, to the east of Colombo. The second gift, just as delightful, is Barbara Grant, the owner of the plantation. Thanks to the protection and skill of the island's generous governor, Sir John Anderson. Your newspaper is astonished at this puff piece, which seems to ignore the working conditions of the local population, but the governor, of course, is delighted. Gain one coin, turn this card over. So the newspaper doesn't love it, but he gave us the governor loves it he gives us a coin we now have three and we turn this over oh look what he gave us and thanks for your complimentary article about his plantations the governor gives you a pass of safe conduct that should make your passage easier in this part of the world at least as far as the british authorities are concerned at least as far as the british authorities are concerned okay so we've got a pass of safe conduct. I'll make it a little easier to deal with the a British rule. 
All right. All right. So far, it's a little easier in the colonial territories if you're friendly towards the colonial governor. That makes sense. All right. So now we could go back on our trip to Darjeeling. If we were trying to make incremental progress, it might make sense to go back now. Remember, we have plenty of money. We could go here and then we could pass where they wouldn't let us pass before. We could, the moment we go here, we go into Darjeeling and into new territory. But we're taking a different approach this game. We're going to be adventurers. Drunk Tiger says, should we buy the newspaper again to read Alexandra's hints? No, we're not going to repeat ourselves. I think now we go straight for this Eastern Gate adventure. Drunk Tiger wants us to remind ourselves of the tips. No, I don't think we're going to mess with any of that. We're going right on our adventure. We're playing this game not to help people, but to be adventurers. All right, here we go. You ready for the Eastern Gate? There's an expedition leaving town. We don't even care where they're going or why. We'll just say, hey, can we join? It seems like a good adventure. Here we go. You meet William Anderson Jr., who's preparing to leave Colombo to journey deep into the Sri Lankan jungle. He's convinced he has a map which will allow him to finally rediscover the mythical city of Anuradhapura. He tells you it was founded in the 3rd century and was a major site of Buddhist pilgrimage around the legendary fig tree of Buddha. The capital of Ceylon for a thousand years Anuradhapura is now lost in the heart of the jungle. Accompanied by his two Sri Lankan porters, you plunge into the thick, abundant overgrowth. Your progress is slow and frustrating. The nights are dogged by the pounding of heavy rain and the ceaseless buzzing of mosquitoes. Your two porters are showing signs of nervousness. William, in the grip of a fevered excitement, is convinced you cannot be far from the extraordinary from an extraordinary discovery which is sure to bring untold glory and riches to both of you <laughs> this is not this is not going to go well this is not going to go well for us this is like lost city of z he's getting delirious he wants to go deeper into the jungle we can back out or we can go deeper in uh we're gonna get malaria all right we're in for a penny he sounds crazy but we can't back out now we could back out now and we'd be safe if we return we just go back no harm no foul nothing wrong but uh we have money, we can't use it. We're going to lose all our money, aren't we, in the jungle? But what if we discover this lost city? We're, Drunk Tiger says we're about to find the tiger again. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid we are, but I think we got to do it. We got to do it, guys. We got to go in. We got to go deeper into the expedition until we lose our mind. Okay, so draw card 20. We're going in. We're continuing the expedition. Drawing card 20. We draw card 20, and we discard this card. After several days... Still not having found the city, you are seized by a strong fever along with headaches, aching limbs, and the most uncomfortable digestive problems. Between sweats, your nightmares return worse than ever. The porters urge you to turn back with them while repeating a word in Tamil, malaria, malaria. William, subject to more and more disturbing hallucinations, ignores the warnings. He is certain of reaching his goal and pushes on ahead on his own. 
Anurad Pora seems within reach. So we could return again, no harm. If we return now, nothing bad has happened. Oh no, card 22 we have to draw. So we might take a little bit of a wound if we return with the porters. Or are we going? I think we're about to die. I think we're going to die here. But it seems like if we're going to, we might as well die now. I mean, surely he's out of his mind. This is a story as old as civilization. Are these reckless explorers thinking they're going to find some last lost city? But ever forward, we're going in. Turn this card over. You ready? Here we go, guys. We're doing it. The expedition becomes a disaster as you and William fall ill with an aggravated type of malaria known as Plasmodium placiparum. Wandering across the forest, forest like zombies, you return to Colombo seriously ill and completely exhausted and are immediately admitted to the town clinic. You are given an extreme course of quinine treatments, and it takes several weeks until you begin to regain your strength. Lose two coin. Okay, so we lost our two coins. We're down to one. And discard this card. Okay. So, as we expected, our little expedition did not end well but now we know never to go there again and we still have a coin to go for to bombay which is we weren't going to try to go to darjeeling anyway even though we've got this stuff now that would have led us all right so the only question is do we do this lose one coin no we don't want to do this because we need the coin right okay so it's time for us to <laughs> lick our wounds and go to Bombay. So we're going to discard the other actions, which is only this one. Lose a coin. We now have zero money. Zero money. Replace this card with 26. Okay, so we took a boat. This time we went to the west of India. This can probably be put aside. Okay, and then to the west, we've got this. All right. In Colombo, you take a boat as far as Tutukaran, where a train carries you to Bangalore. Another train takes you along the west coast to Goa and finally to Bombay. You quickly lose yourself in this sprawling city, which now has over a million inhabitants. Violent rains and unbearable humidity make the smallest of movements a challenge. For many of the poor here, town life is just a constant struggle to survive, and you see scenes of deprivation and profound misery. Now is not the time for you to find calm and inner peace. That much is confirmed by Alphonse Dugamoy, a consular attaché you meet by chance during one of your explorations. He declares that the town, like the country, is on the verge of an uprising in the name of a man he has heard talk of recently called Gandhi who is gathering around him some of the discontented voices seeking independence. Turn this card over. At your request, Dugamoy carries out several inquiries about this Alexandra David Neal. No one, either in his circle or at the Theosophical Society he belongs to, has heard any mention of her passage to Bombay. It seems like you are on the wrong track. Since the French state is trying to close down its Indian agencies to concentrate on its interests in Indochina, 
Dugamoy suggests you reconsider your position in India. You are now convinced that your journey might be more fruitful if you traveled toward Nepal or north to Tibet. Tired and more than a little demoralized, you catch a train heading north. Now it says lose two coins, turn card 26 over, and discard this card. But we don't have any coins, and the rules say if you go below zero, turn it over. So we have to turn this over now. Let's see what we see. You have exhausted your finances. At the end of your means, you resign yourself to asking your editor to bring you back to Europe. Your odyssey through Asia ends here for now, but you can begin your adventure anew, making different choices that will lead you down alternate paths. So basically, we've lost the game running out of money. So here's our second loss of the game. Ran out of money. All right. Now, what shall we do? I think we should just back up to where, if we can, back up to where we went on that crazy expedition that we knew was not smart to do. Let's see if we can do that. So this was still on the table. This was still on the table. We had money. Forget if we had two or three. Six twenty-seven. I mean, we could rewind the whole thing, but I don't think we need to do that. I think it was like this. So my suggestion is we return to this situation. Wait, no, we needed the expedition. Where was the expedition people here? There. Okay. So I think I've rewound it to where we were before we went on the crazy expedition. And Anna said we had three money. So we had three money. We sold our soul, wrote about the positive benefits of colonialism. And then for the hell of it, we went on this crazy expedition that got us malaria and lost all our money. All but two of our money. And then we took a boat to Bombay, which we knew was far away from her. So now, instead of going on this expedition, we're going to take our three money and we're going to leave for the north of India. Yeah, how do you guys feel about that? We need to record our ending. I did. I did. I recorded another failure. We ran out of money. So we had a failure ending in the Chinese warlord. We had a failure. We ran out of money and we had to go back to France. And now here's our third playthrough. which we've just rewound and still did the awful things that got us these wonderful treasures <laughs> of the military badge. Okay, so we're going north. Leave Darjeeling. So we need to do the, uh, we need to do something to tell us that, okay, we've reset, we've rewound, we're playing our third game. We redid all our stuff, got our safe passage. Leave for Darjeeling. So we lose two coins. Go down to one dollar left. Uh, we're going to leave all these in the discard pile that were there. Hopefully, if it needs to find one, we will. We can sell our... We could have sold, we, we could have sold this for a coin, but that wasn't enough. We lost two coins. Okay, so we would have died anyway. All right, and now turn this card over. Okay, so now these can go away. Here we are sailing to North India. 
That one's 28, it looks like. Twenty-eight. Okay, here we go. So this is this we've seen before, but what's about to happen is new for us. Pondicherry, Madras, Calcutta. You travel for days before finally arriving in Darjeeling. There, English soldiers inform you that, in view of recent worrying events of rebellion, the region of Sikkim is being placed under curfew. From now on, it's forbidden for any foreigners to be there without imperial permission. Non-British Westerners are being assigned rooms under strict surveillance in the only hotel that remains open. Now, if you have the military badge or the safe conduct, we actually have both. At the sight of your British credentials, the soldiers talk to each other for a moment, then let you go with a respectful salute. Turn this card over. Here we are in Darjeeling, not confined to hotel. Okay. So, now this is getting serious. We've got 30, 31, and 29. Okay, so this is new stuff for us. All right, now we gotta be careful. Now we're back into cautious mode. Because we're playing with people's lives now, for real. Before, we were just going on adventures, but now this is our real life. So we got a beautiful little map here. There it looks like the hotel where the people are being... Oh, look, more stuff comes out. 32 and 33. There's 33. Whoa, the map just got big. There's the hotel. 34 is down here, 35, wow, okay, so we got a big map now. Let me give you a better look at this. Let's put our stuff here. We didn't lose our, our passage of safe conduct. Don't forget, if the, lo if the locals find us with this passage of safe convict conduct, they might not, or the, and the British Medal, they might not be so happy. I wonder if we should think about selling that before we get caught with it. So here's our new stuff. The map got big and when it came out. So there we are in Darjeeling. We've got the hotel that we're not locked in now that we can visit him, visit the refugee camp near the hotel, or question the, ma the manager about Alexandra. We can visit Poppy Fields. Or we can go to the Maharaja's palace, ask for an audience with the Maharaja for one coin. Or we can go to the Sherpa camp to ask if Alexandra David Neal has passed through the camp. Or we can visit this guide, go to the Robdens. What is it called? The Robdens, a site of Buddhist pilgrimage, or go to the Buddhist monastery. That would cost us two coins. We only have one. But we could sell, at any point, we could sell our military badge. Now, I wonder if at some point having that military badge is actually not a good thing. Like, it's good when we meet the colonial British, but it might not be viewed so friendly by the locals. If we sold this, we would have two coins. We could go to the Buddhist monastery. But we got lots of options here now. What do you guys think we should do? We could make a quick buck, Drunk Tiger says, writing an article about the poppy fields, or we get killed. Very tempting. I mean, I'm a big fan of Sherpas, so... I wouldn't be opposed to going to Sherpas. That doesn't cost us any money either. I'm not so interested in going to this hotel. We could go to the hotel and meet that guy again who wants a flight out. 
we could help him with his flight out, and now we have the passage that would let us... But we're not ready for that. That's Taking that plane is what got us to Tibet before we were truly ready. I think we need to go and get get um, get some peace at the Buddhist monastery, maybe, and see if we can't get rid of our nightmare vision, you know? But I wouldn't be opposed to going to the Sherpa camp. Um... first to see what options we have before we make our decision. This guy, he's he's corrupt, right? We, he's not, I don't think, I don't know, he could give us a passage for the locals. Anna says, I think we need some Buddhist wisdom. Well, we could go to the pilgrimage for one coin, which we have, or we could go to the monastery if we sell our metal. I don't think we really want that metal. So I'm inclined to sell it. But I'm also inclined to visit the Sherpas first. But wait, maybe they won't like the metal. All right, what's, should we sell our metal? I'm scared to get caught with it. Like we have a pass, we have safe conduct passage. Why do we need a medal? Uh, yeah, we've got locals all over here that might not like our bridge medal. I'm going to sell the medal. So I'm going to discard this card for an extra dollar, an extra gold. So now we have two gold. But mostly I want to sell it because I don't want to get caught with it. All right, now we've got all the options available to us. We can visit the Maharaja. We can go to the Buddhist monastery at La Shen. There's the Buddhist monastery, by the way. It says if we go there, we flip this over. Is this the monastery that the Chinese warlord was running? Because I don't want to go visit him. Drunk Tiger says, I want to keep the medal in case we needed to get the pilot out of prison. Is that what he wanted? The medal? Is that what we got? We're not going back to that pilot. He brought us trouble. He brought us right to the tiger. That's the tiger talking. That's the tiger who's talking, trying to get us to visit the tiger again. I think we should... Why does it cost us so much gold to get to the monastery? Try the pilgrims for one coin, then we can't go to the monastery if we go to the pilgrims. All right, I'm going to go with the channel's suggestions. What The next person who suggests, that's what we'll do. You don't want to try the Sherpas first? I think we should see what the Sherpas are about first. So I'm going to go to the Sherpa, then we'll go to the other people. Okay. All right, let's, so you can see it. So I went to the Sherpas. It says, expeditions attempting to scale Mount Everest leave from this place. You find out that Alexandra David Neal recruited a team here to cross Nepal and reach Tibet through the mountain. This was some time ago, and no one knows if or when she arrived. You are warned that it is not the best season and the weather conditions are too dangerous to attempt an ascent now. A young Sherpa called Pankaj is of a different opinion, stating you can organize an expedition well equipped to withstand the cold and use a path he knows to be safe. So we could go on the expedition with one coin or turn this card over to go later. All right, now 
I recommended in the beginning of this stream a book called Into Thin Air, one of my favorite books ever by John Krakow about a terrible season on Everest that killed many people. And really, when you climb Everest, it's all about the weather. And we're being warned here not that this is not the best season to climb Everest. I trust the Sherpas, but this young, inexperienced Sherpa wants us to go up Everest? No. So maybe later. No, thank you. No, thank you. We do not need to climb Everest in the coldest, worst seasons. If you get caught on a storm in Everest, you're in trouble. So let's look at our options now. We could go to Everest with the young Sherpa. Uh, that sounds horrible. We could, we have two coins. We could go to the Rabba Dents, the site of Buddhist pilgrimage. We could spend both of our coins to go to the monastery where maybe we'll find peace. We could go to the poppy fields owner, maybe buy some opium. We could visit the Maharaja. Or we could go to the hotel, which I don't want to go anywhere near. That's where we got in trouble before. People just want our help there. Or we could visit the refugee camp near the hotel. They might have heard about her. All right, I'm inclined to do one of these two. I'm just not sure which. Which one of these would you guys like to do? If we go to this one, maybe we'll get a coin back and get a chance to do this one, but maybe not. If we only have one coin after this, we're going to have to do one of these three things. But this monastery looks like it could go somewhere, and this, this, um, this place could be more mapped too. We know she went to the monastery. We can't do both of these unless we get another coin. We could go here and write about the poppy fields. All right, let's go to the poppy fields. Let's see what happens. I'm a little nervous, but maybe we can write a story about it. We could write a story about the refugee camp, too. The editor did like those stories. All right, let's go to the poppy fields. This is a little nerve-wracking. Muller is upset, but he understands. Wait, what happened? Oh, draw. Sorry, draw card thirty-seven. I shouldn't have done. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't have read that. It says we're meeting the person, so we draw card thirty-seven. You meet Theophile Muller, an old French factory owner, delighted to come across a fellow countryman. So this French guy is running the poppy field. He seems annoyed by the most recent laws proposed to restrict the cultivation of poppies, especially now when the opium and morphine they produce are vital for the wounded at the front. He's most concerned by the administrative complications if these new orders are passed, and he cannot imagine how to avoid the mountains of new forms he will be asked to complete. He would be happy to show his thanks if you would lend him a hand just for the time being. Scanning the pile of documents on his desk, you notice a piece in German, according to which a large quantity of opium would be delivered in exchange for a mysterious cargo delivered by plane. We can help him put things in order, or make your excuses and leave the factory, in which case this card gets turned over and this gets discarded. So we see a document a German letter about a large quantity of opium in exchange for some mysterious cargo. Um, I think we should just leave here. This seems too dangerous and unrelated to our adventure and likely to get us in trouble. I suggest we make our excuses and leave the factory and hope we can get out of here with a little harm. So we're going to make our excuses to leave the factory. So turn 34 over, discard this card. All right, let's read what this says. 
Moeller is upset, but he understands your decision. Nevertheless, he asks you to remain discreet about his activities. If you have an opportunity, he invites you to get in contact with Heinrich Friedman, a young German confined to the hotel where you are staying. He may be able to explain the importance and legitimacy of their cause to you better than Muller can, and even convince you to join them in their struggle. You leave the area swiftly, and a few minutes later pass a number of English soldiers marching toward the factory. You owe your safety, quite simply, to the wise decision not to get involved in the more delicate geopolitical events in this part of the world. So basically, he's about to be raided. If we hadn't excused ourselves, we would have been caught in that raid. It says, turn over card 31 and discard this card. Okay, so we just dodged a bullet. They raided it, and it now 44 comes out. Okay, well, we know that card. Talk with the European confined in the hotel. That's the guy who can fly us to Tibet. Otherwise known as, that's the guy who can fly us to the tiger. Now, uh, Drunk Tiger was saying that that metal could have been used when we got there, but I, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't want to help this guy. And this is the guy that the opium guy is telling us to help. So I don't think we should get involved with those people. But we could go to the refugee camp and see if there's a story to be written that might get us more money, which would let us do both of these things. Shall we do that? It could cost us money, though, and then we won't be able to go to the monastery. Depends how badly we want to go to the monastery. I think we're okay with not going to the monastery if we run out of money. So let's go to the refugee camp. Okay, visit the refugee camp near the hotel. Draw 36. Several military tents have been pitched near, this, near the hotel. In them, you discover a dozen Tibetan monks who fled their temple when it was raided by a band of mercenaries. Since the recent Chinese revolution, chaos and confusion have, resigned, have reigned over the whole region, organized by various warlords who make illegal raids outside their own territories. Yeah, we're familiar with the Chinese warlords. The monks have just crossed the mountains, despite harsh weather, and are very weak. Some are even severely injured. You leave them to their prayers for their companions still in Tibet, whom they fear have come to a sorry end. For a moment, you imagine writing an article about this dramatic news, but the witness's silence and the lack of sufficiently precise information about the ins and outs of such a situation make you decide against it. Discard card 32, which was the hotel manager. And discard this card. Notice, though, it's got a key. So when we next play through the game, we'll see the opposite side of this card. I really like that feature. That seems like a really clever feature to me. It adds a kind of legacy element to it. All right. Well, that's that wrapped up now. We've gone here. That guy, Sherpa, wants us to go to Everest. That's going to cost us money and get us killed. This guy wants to fly us, which is a reasonable thing. We may end up having to do that anyway. I don't feel... I feel like this guy... Sorry. I feel like this guy is corrupt. I'm not so inclined to talk to the Maharesh, the local leader, especially since he gives a, takes us a coin. So I think it's time now to either go to the pilgrimage and then we'll have a coin left over, but we won't be able to go to the monastery or go to the monastery for both of our last coins. I guess I'm inclined to go to the monastery. Drunk Tiger says, what do the rules say about cards which have no pointers to them anymore? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. All right, we're going to the monastery. We're spending all of our coins to go to the monastery, and we're just praying that there aren't, there isn't a Chinese warlord in there. Do we think the Chinese warlords are there? 
Please don't, because we just met the refugees. The monks had just crossed the mountains. They leave them in their prayers. No, because this is the monastery in Darjeeling, right? If there's the Chinese warlords here, I'm not going to be happy. Drunk Tiger says, I thought it said something in the FAQ. Mm, no, it doesn't say anything about when a card no longer has a pointer to it. I think if it's out, like this guy is out, he's out. Oh, well, whatever. Um, okay, let's go to the monastery. If the warlord is there, we're just going to run out. That's all of our money. Here we go in the monastery. Turn card 33 over. When we turn 33 over, the only thing that happened is we've now got a route to location 40. The Wachen Monastery. Ask the monks more about Alexandra David Neal's journey. She passed through here. That's fantastic for us. Okay, here we go. We're going to turn this card. Oh, wait. We went here. Yeah, Don't doesn't say anything about this card. Okay, here we go. You meet the head of the monastery, La Chen. La Chen Gomchen Rinpoche. He confirms that Alexandra David Neal stopped here as part of her spiritual journey. That's fantastic. Out of respect for the intimate and confidential nature of this process, he will say nothing more about her stay, neither about its length nor even whether she is still here. You begin to familiarize yourself with the idea of karma, reincarnation, and denial of self. Gamchen then proposes a longer and more complete course of learning, which requires you to commit yourself to isolate for several weeks. So, we could follow the course of warning or set out to look for Alexandra again, which just discards this card. Notice that if we did discard this card, we have no money. We're gonna, we're, we may have to help that airplane guy because we have no money. So let's follow this course of learning. Let's become Buddhist, says the drunk, says the tiger. All right, let's do it. So we're going to follow this course of warning for sure. I'm hoping that we can get rid of our nightmare. Follow the course of warning. We're drawing card 41 and discarding this card. Okay. See what we've got here. Having temporarily withdrawn from the world into the calm and silence of the Buddhist monastery, you start to comprehend the idea of enlightenment by developing virtue, sila, Meditation, Sita, and Wisdom, Pranja, Prajna. Your discipline allows you to become more gentle towards yourself and to appreciate the world around you with more detachment. The apprenticeship also enlightens you about your untapped capacity to understand the functions and potentials within your own body. You master, your master also talks to you about the most famous technique of the six teachings of Naropna. Tumo, which involves creating and developing inner heat within your body. Now you are less afraid of the cold. Just like Alexandra learned. Turn this card over and draw card 43. Whoa, look at that. We've got inner heating. So now if we get to some cold place like Everest, perhaps we can warm ourselves okay we'll put that up and it says draw card 43. <laughs> emerging from this apprenticeship your master now proposes losum chosum Three years, three months, and three days of spiritual 
retreat to attain enlightenment and finally free yourself from the burdens of the world that weigh on your tormented soul. You will live as a hermit, essentially enclosed within four walls devoted to meditation. Commitment to this path is irreversible, and the decision is heavy with consequences, as you will emerge forever changed. So, right now we have to decide, do we want to shut yourself off from the world for more than three years, or set out to look for Alexandra again? Now, if we choose this one, I feel like that's going to be an ending. That's right. Anna agrees. That will be an ending. Um, sure, we will get fired, but we'll find enlightenment. Maybe we get rid of this nightmare in our lives and find peace. Or we can continue looking for Alexandra. This would depend on whether we want to end the game and get this ending or continue on. Drunk Tiger says, we learned inner heat. That's good enough. Anna says, let's continue our search. It sounds like, oh, everyone's going to want to continue our search. Okay, so we're not going to end the game with inner peace. We're going to go further on. We are penniless. I don't know if we're going to get a better ending than inner peace. Think hard now. And this is your last chance for inner peace. If you were really in this monastery, you sure you don't want to get rid of your hidden your demons and get inner peace? All right, we're going further, further on. So we're just going to discard this card. Now we've got some tricky situation because we have no money. So we cannot go to the Buddhist pilgrimage. We cannot ask for an audience with the Maharaja. Our only options now are talk to that pilot or, oh, we can't even do this. We can't even go to the expedition because we don't have any money. So the only thing for us to do is talk to the pilot again. What if we died and got reincarnated as a tiger? Everything will make sense about this game loop. That's a very interesting theory. All right, well, now our choices have brought us back to this guy. Sorry. Talk with the European confined in the hotel. I keep thinking that when I make a choice, I would flip it over, but it's not always the case. So he's in room 12 at the hotel. We're going to talk to him. It's the only thing we can do. What happened to this card 40? Did we already resolve that? Yes, that was the monastery teachings. All right, so we have to draw card 45. Hopefully he doesn't need money from us. The young man is called Heinrich Friedman, who tells you he's a deserter from the German Air Force. He's crossed part of Europe and Central Asia in stages in his biplane. Like you, he has... Fled from the horror of war to try and find wisdom and peace here. Like you, he would like to get to Lhasa. British authorities have assigned him a room in the hotel. Uh, he wants to get a me message to his fiancée and her family who think he's dead. He's got a plan. To, he proposes to explain the complications of the local geopolitical solution situation to you so you can write a comprehensive article that will gain you precious time. In return, he asks if at the same time you could discreetly send... Oh, this is different. He doesn't want us to fly him out anymore. Okay, so his fiance thinks he's dead. Like you, he would like to get to Lhasa. British authorities have assigned him in a room, can find him. Won't let him talk to the outside world. Isolated for six months, he would like to get a message to his fiance and her family, who would 
who surely believe him to be dead. As you're a journalist, he proposes to explain the complications of the local geopolitical situation to you so you can write a comprehensive article that will gain you precious time. In return, he asks if, at the same time, you could discreetly send a short telegraph message to assure his loved ones. So we could say, maybe later this goes back in the deck, or accept his proposal and turn this card over, where clearly we're going to accept his proposal. Was the other guy from the first playthrough also Heinrich Friedman? I thought he, I thought he was. Maybe I turn this card over instead of reading it. I'm not sure. But let's accept his proposal. All he wants is a telegram saying he's still alive. So let's do it. Turn this card over. Here we go. From our correspondent in Darjeeling, Northern India. So we've written this article. The convulsions of the Eastern Empire. The region of Sikkim in Northern India is a crossroads of major diplomatic interests. In an area of the world shaken by all kinds of problems of its own, the recent chaotic formation of the Republic of China and the ensuing conflicts between warlords, the controversial status of Tibet, the isolation of Nepal, and the closure of its borders, and the movements of the Indian freedom fighters all make this luxuriant valley and the foothills of the Himalayas into a veritable powder keg. Your editor is completely delighted with this article and agrees to send Heinrich's short message. Here's the message he sent. I'm in Darjeeling under British supervision. My plane is temporarily unavailable, but I will try to resume my flights, HF. Unfortunately, since the banks in Sikkim are currently closed, the money order which your editor sends is recorded and blocked by the British curfew. You receive no money. Furthermore, his letter does not sound like it's to his fiancée. He says, I will try to resume my flights. I think he's smuggling opium. Either way, draw card 46 and discard this card. I'm a little nervous now. Yeah. Look what it says. You are brought in to the offices of the British military police. Captain Andrew Starling informs you that they have intercepted your message in German and asks you what it concerns. When you invoke the freedom of the press and the confidentiality of your sources, the officer loses his stoic composure and gives you a clear warning. In time of war, his authority takes precedence over all others, and his request is, in effect, an order. Any disobedience will lead to military tribunal for sharing secrets with the enemy. He therefore repeats his question and now awaits a complete and detailed response. We can continue to protest our innocence or cooperate and tell them everything you know. Uh... Anna says, I think he's a spy, and that message wouldn't be for a girlfriend. For sure, that message is not for the girlfriend. Was the other guy... Uh, they were going to send something to the Germans. So, yeah, I don't think this guy is... I think this guy's a bad guy. He's either smuggling opium or, yeah, they were doing something with the Germans. So, I think he's a bad guy. I think we should cooperate. Cooperate and tell them everything you know. So, draw card 47, and then discard this card. Hmm. You tell him... You tell him everything you know about Heinrich Friedman and his request to send a message in German. The captain listens to you politely, then asks you less politely to tell him something he doesn't already know. He's losing his patience rapidly with the small amount of information you're giving him. Convinced you have a more dubious role in this business, he asks himself if it wouldn't be better to put you under arrest for a while. Please don't. Perhaps the confinement of a cell will loosen your tongue. Faced with the sudden change of events, you demand the presence of a lawyer. You're granted one for a fee. After a night of negotiations, the lawyer secures your release Considering the charges that could be brought against you are pretty slim. 
In the morning, you're free, only to realize you have lost precious time and money. Your finances dropped to zero. Okay, they were already zero. That's fine. And then turn this card over. Late at night, well after lights out, Heinrich Friedman knocks gently on your door. Oh, dear God. Please leave us out of this. Accompanied by two young men in masks. He thanks you for sending his message and for having been, he adds ironically, diplomatic with the British authorities about it. Now that his friends have found him again, thanks to his coded message, it is finally possible for him to leave Darjeeling. Tonight they will drive him to his airplane, hidden not far from here. To express his gratitude, he asks if you'd like to leave with him immediately. He'll take you wherever you'd like. He says staying here will only bring you more trouble. Then it says, turn card 44 over and discard this card. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Okay, 44 is over, and look what we've got. Leave Darjeeling by plane flying towards Tibet. Here's the thing. We have no money. It's the only thing we can do. We don't really have a choice about this. This is the only action that doesn't need money. This needs money. This needs money. And this one needs money. So we're going to have to fly out with Friedrich after we just told the authorities about him. This is really playing with fire here, but there's nothing else to do. Perhaps we should have considered that it would have been better to leave via the Buddhist pilgrimage. Well, he, Anna says we betrayed him, but he's still willing to help. He doesn't know we betrayed him. He thinks we didn't tell them anything. And maybe we shouldn't have. Nerve-wracking. All right, here we go. We're leaving Darjeeling by plane, flying towards Tibet. Replace this card with 48. But before we do, we need to take another break. All right, so we're getting close to where we died before. How come they didn't arrest him? I don't know. Maybe they're planning on arresting him tomorrow. Anna says, why didn't they arrest him? I don't know. You want me to make sure I didn't make a mistake? We cooperated. Draw card 47. 47 was him coming to knock on our door. Maybe they're just going to watch him. All right, so we're going to take an eight-minute break. We'll come back, and we'll try to get on this plane it's a little nerve-wracking, but hopefully it'll be okay.
You are watching Caught for Two. We are back. <clears throat> We're about to get in this plane and get out of here. This guy is wanted by the authorities. I hope we can get off this, get out of Darjeeling alive and not get shot down. But we really have no other option. I would say the number one thing that this game has taught me so far is if you want to pet a tiger, you better make sure your karma is totally maxed out. Right now we've got no karma, so hopefully we can avoid the tigers. But let us 
can get into this plane and go towards Tibet. So replace this card 44 with 48. Remember, there's nothing else for us to do. Everything else costs money, which we don't have. Replace this card with 48. You gather your things quickly, meet Heinrich discreetly, and board his biplane. As it takes off, you see English military vehicles below you driving towards the secret runway as they're trying to catch him. You were very lucky that you weren't all arrested. Flying over the rocky foothills in the first glimmers of day is a sublime experience. Then you realize you have forgotten the satchel containing all of your money. So here you are with no resources. This was the same car we got when we left earlier on our previous playthrough. So here you are with no resources on route to an unknown destination, placing your future completely into the hands of fate, which here they call karma. Heinrich lands his plane on the eastern border of Tibet in the province of Shigats. This is as far as he can go. Before he turns back, he wishes you the best of luck and hopes that the war will be over soon. Discard the pass of safe conduct the military insignia and the sacred medallion, if you have them. Wow, we just lost our past of safe conduct. This is how I was hoping this was going to save us from something. We don't have them, though, anymore. Discard all other actions. Draw 42 and turn this card over. So we're supposed to discard all actions that we could have done. That was this one too. This map of Darjeeling we're not going to need anymore. I'm just going to put it off to the side. We can reconstruct it if we need to. Draw card 42, then turn this card over. So 42... Forty-two says you have no need of money anymore, so we discard that card. And now turn this card over, place it in front of you with the one at top. All right, so we're starting now with one karma. This just says, if you ever reach zero karma, your journey isn't over, but you can't make choices which require karma. Okay. Then turn this card over, and here we are, flying in to the border of Tibet. Remember, this is how we got killed soon after. Here's 55. <clears throat> Here you are at the gateway to Tibet in a landscape of breathtaking beauty at the front of an almost black mountain, contrasting with the white snow on the glacier. Green meadows stretch as far as the eye can see around an immense turquoise lake. If card 49 is visible, it's not. We don't know how you get to that. This mu that must be a different way to get to, to Tibet other than the plane. So we're not doing that. If not, on a hill you notice some long colored flags. Beyond a forest you make out narrow columns of smoke, surely coming from a village. Further off the shores of the lake, you spot the roofs of a little monastery. Then we turn this card over, and here we go. So we recognize this world. We've been in here, and it ended very poorly for us. So let us be careful about what we do here. Okay, so we've got another place to go from this map, 56. The journey of the last few days has genuinely exhausted you. After a sleep haunted by the nightmares of the past, you open your eyes... Oh, this was the one we, this is when we first got to it, we got this. Now on our second playthrough, we get this card. The journey of the last few days has genuinely exhausted you. After a sleep haunted by the nightmares of the past, you open your eyes to a new day filled with renewed potential. A world away from the filthy, dark, deadly trenches, the landscape before you is nothing but open air, bright light, and far horizons. With your heart and soul filled with hope and faith to what is to come. 
you resume your journey. On the summit of the hill, attached to the big multicolored flags, you see a number of strips of painted fabric blowing in the wind. You surprise a very young man, head shaved and wearing the traditional red tikavara, who is attaching a new piece of fabric. Now look, this is what's different. We gain a karma. Look how clever that is. I didn't even make the connection to reincarnation. But look how neat that is. Like we've essentially been reincarnated and we're now playing this game again, having been sort of reincarnated for ourselves, and now we've got some extra karma. So that's actually pretty cool. Okay, so the first time we played it is identical, but we didn't gain a karma. Now we're gaining a karma. Okay, so now it says get card, replace it with 57. Unfortunately, we're going to need more than that to visit a, visit a tiger. Knowing a few scra scraps of English, he introduces himself to you. His name is Lop Sang. He explains that he had to flee a neighboring monastery when it was besieged and looted by a cruel Chinese warlord, and now he's all alone. You ask him to travel some of the way with you, but he explains politely that he must finish writing his prayers for each of his lost brothers first before the wind carries them to the gods. After several hours, you understand that the ritual needs to last as long as the young monk's Profound pain. In the icy wind and the encroaching night, you ask yourself if your presence here is a help or hindrance to Lopsang in his ritual of silent prayer. Last time we played, we said, well, I'll just leave him alone. Uh, I don't remember what this card is. I do remember when we started looking, we ended up with the woman and the icy river and the tiger and the warlords. So I feel like maybe we should hang out with Lopsang and let him guide us from here. We need a local. So I think what we gotta do here is just wait as long as he needs to wait. We've got our inner warmth to keep us warm. So I think we should spend our karma and stay with him. So we're gonna stay here for the night. We're gonna lose a karma. So our karma is going from 2 to 1. Replace this card 57 with 58. Yeah, let's just hang out with Lopsang. He knows about tigers and so on. Okay, you walk with Lopsang. You walk with Lopsang, who is quickly becoming a most agreeable traveling companion attentive, willing, and a good listener. You recount your discoveries about Alexandra David Neal, an exceptional woman of the West. Hearing your enthusiasm and the great hopes you have for your quest, Lopsang searches his memory and thinks he can remember that one of his masters, now gone, spoke of a meeting with a Western woman in a distant village on the other side of the lake. Several days walk away. He's delighted to see a spark of hope jump in your eyes. Lopsang, however, will not follow you in that direction. He tells you that it is his duty now to go back to his village and help his people. You insist that he accompany you. He's sorry, but his urgent mission, though it may seem pointless to you, is to return to his people to pray for the salvation of those who are gone. We can follow the route he showed us, or we can accompany him to his village. Mm. He's not going to the monastery, he's going to the village.
If we go with him to his village, then maybe he'll accompany us afterward. But is he going to walk us right into the Chinese warlords? That's what I'm afraid of. He's going back to his village to help his people. I'm just afraid the Chinese warlords are there. All right, shall we go accompany him? He does seem like a good companion. Like, we need a companion. We need someone for the tiger to go after. I think we have to go with Lopsang. I'm nervous that we're going to get to the Chinese warlord, but let's do it. Okay, so we're going to accompany Lopsang to his village. The tiger says, go with Lopsang to get our karma back. I'm a little worried when the tiger advises us someplace to go. I feel like the tiger just wants to eat us. Actually, the tiger did not eat us at the last game. Let's remember it. Let us go back. Okay. So replace this card with 59. We're accompanying Lopsang. I'm a little nervous. You stay with Lopsang and accompany him to his village. There you realize he has no family. He was sent to the temple as an orphan to become a monk, and his return, as long as his training is not complete, elicits no particular enthusiasm. Your presence, however, stirs curiosity and raises a few questions. You announce that Lopsang's generosity and wisdom have helped you avoid several missteps and guided you thus far. Your praise seems to work, and finally they welcome the young monk and give thanks for his return. Thanks to you, he has found a home where his virtues and best qualities can flourish. You resume your, you resume your journey, having said a long for, farewell to Lopsang, who thanks you profusely. While there is little chance that your paths will cross again, one thing is certain. The shining memory of him will stay with you for a long time. Gain two karma. So now we are at three karma. Enough to charm the tiger. Then we turn it over. Oh, look at that. There's his village. There's that bridge that that woman wants help crossing. I am inclined not to help that woman. She didn't even thank us. I think she was stealing stuff or something. Oh boy, here's the tiger. All right, here we go. After these events, let's get a close up here. After these events, you plunge into the forest. So this is the generic after events. You plunge into the forest. A compound of centuries old, composed of centuries old pines and spruces. You move forward on a soft carpet of needles in the shadow of these green, red, and gold giants, a huge organic cathedral. The magic of this place and time is suddenly broken by a noise, a crack followed by a low growl, as an imposing and majestic white tiger appears at the edge of the clearing. He stops and looks intently at you. For a few moments you are transfixed by his vision, held between disbelief, terror, and fascination. Is it a trick of your imagination? The tiger seems to be sizing you up too. It seems he can sense your fear, or, on the other hand, your inner calm. He shifts between wanting to attack and being willing to let you go. Now you must turn around in your path or appeal to your karma to overcome the test. So, we remember that in our previous life, we lost a karma, and then we got a card that said, the tiger's still there, spend two karma, to advance. Now we have all three, and our option is to go to the monastery. That's the last place we want to go with the Chinese warlord. So now we have our inner calm. We are going to stare the tiger in the eye, remain calm, and just walk right by him. Tiger is in the chat. Are you prepared to let us go, tiger? <laughs> That's the question. We don't know what's going to happen. 
We know a little bit he's going to let us go, but we're not sure. So we're going to move towards the tiger. We're going to lose one of our karma. Now we're down to two. Put our karma nearby. We're going to need it. Thanks to Lop saying we have two karma left. And we're going to draw card 65. Tiger says we shall see. All right, here we go, 65. You approach, and as carefully as possible, try to walk around the animal. He scrutinizes the tiniest of your movements, then straightens up, and with his huge mouth wide open, lets out a long, powerful roar. Everything around you suddenly becomes strangely silent. A moment of truth in which you feel your heart racing, and the animal seems to sense the blood now beating strongly in your veins. He licks his lips and roars even more impressively as he approaches you menacingly. We can continue moving forward to move around the animal, or run away to the monastery. Okay. We're going to move forward. <laughs> I'm a little concerned that the fact that we haven't learned to avoid our nightmare is going to make us twitch when we get too near that tiger, but let's try it. Continue moving forward to move around the animal. So we're going to lose our last two karma. Let's turn this card over. I'm a little nervous that we're still missing. We might be missing something to get past them, like a snack. Or some inner peace. You draw on your deepest inner resources to master the thumping of your heart and all the signs of fear. The tiger now watches you approach with a curiosity tinged with fear. You advance gently and, without challenging him, you walk around the animal step by step. Once he is behind you, you maintain the same pace and leave the clearing safely and calmly. It's only a little further on that you risk a look behind you. The tiger has disappeared, but you are certain you can never come through this forest again. If his master permitted you to challenge him once, you know that the next attempt would be fatal. Replace card 61 with 66 and discard this card. Uh... Where's card 61? We don't have a 61. Oh, so 61 was this one. I don't know why I would. I thought these go away after you use them. So I don't know why it's telling us to. I guess it thought this one should still be out, maybe. Okay, that's a little bit of a mistake or a bug, but it doesn't matter. 61 was 66. Was this supposed to have a different a card that we didn't bring out? Was I supposed to bring out 62 and I didn't? No, I don't think I was supposed to turn this over. Oh, only if this were we turn this over. Okay, so if we somehow turn this over, I don't know. 61 was 66. So we made it past the tiger. That was scary. Okay, so 61 goes to 66. Okay. That was a little scary. All right, so the tiger let us pass, but we have no karma. And we've just gone to a new village, new area. We're in a new color, too. It seems like orange. I guess maybe we were in that color. Okay, and now 67 comes out. Okay. And then discard this card. Never go back in the in that tiger's forest again, it said. Otherwise, we'll surely die. All right, so we've made it down. And here we are, 67. You arrive in a little village of Tibetan huts, surrounded by barley fields where a few yaks graze. A young woman called Opame 
offers you hospitality and serves you a big bowl of sampa. Roasted barley flour mixed with tea and enhanced with butter and cheese. Most of the men have left to join the Tibetan army under the flag of Songsten Kampo. So life in the village has become very difficult, especially since bands of mercenaries regularly make incursions into the region. Opami tells you that you are not far from Lhasa and shows you the path that will lead you there in just a few days. You also understand that the coming barley harvest needs workers, of which there are far too few in the village at the moment. Your hostess and the other women and old men here would be delighted and relieved to have you at their side. So we can stay and help with the barley harvest or set out for Lhasa. All right. What do you guys think? Do we stay and risk the mercenaries coming and getting us? Or stay and help them and get some karma back? Anna says help them. We are out of karma. It seems like it would make sense for us to try to get a little more. I'm not sure. It's a little risky, but yes, let's help them out. So turn this card over. Uh-oh. If you have the medallion, we do not. Sorry. So I turned it over and it said, if you have the medallion, we don't. If not, you spend weeks with these women and these few old men working hard, sharing the simple and satisfying pleasures of work well done. The end of the harvest is marked by a great celebration with you as the guest of honor. Draw card 68 and discard this card. Okay, so we spent weeks with them. And now we set out for Lhasa. So we didn't get any reward. You set out for Lhasa. After several days asking for alms here and there to keep you going, you arrive on foot at the legendary Forbidden City in a valley in the heart of the mountains. One of the highest cities in the world, 12,000 feet. 11,000, 12,000 feet. The sight of this garden city, surrounded by 22 parks, composed of temples and magnificent Potala Palace, and the magnificent Potala Palace is ravishing. The White Palace, residence of the Dalai Lama, the Red Palace, devoted to study, and the monastic college, so many sites of unique architectural interest, imposing structures, and the prayer-laden air that fills them. You have arrived at the end of your journey. You have reached your goal. We did it. We made it to Lhasa. Turn card 66 over and then turn this card over. So 66 over. And turn this card over. That's it. We made it to Lhasa. There's, all right, there's Lhasa. So here was 66 on the path to Lhasa. There's Lhasa, the city on the top of this mountain, the capital of Tibet. All right, let's read our answer here. Your heart is filled with joy and pride as you walk the streets of Lhasa and uncover its history. You learn that a few years earlier, Zan Erfeng, a Chinese warlord, besieged and looted it. But in 1912, Subtin Gyatso, the current and 13th Dalai Lama, produced, proclaimed the independence of Tibet and set out a series of reforms to modernize the city as well as the country. Perhaps you will write a new article to try to explain your feelings. Who knows, one day you may meet Alexandra David Neal and talk with her about the earthly and spiritual beauty of this part of the world. One thing is certain, when this war comes to an end, you will return home enriched by a new culture and quieted by an ancient philosophy. You will be ready to live the new earthly adventures with a free spirit because you will always keep deep inside yourself 
the calm strength of Lhasa's deep foundations. And then it says to draw card 70, which is the card saying that we've ended, completed the game. That was a little sudden. So we stayed and helped with the harvest. And then that asked if we had a medallion. If not, we spend weeks and draw card 68. I'm just making sure nothing was done wrong. Draw card 68. And if we had gone directly for Wasa, we would have still drawn card 68. So either way, we get card 68. That there was some um, medallion that would have taken us on a different path. So let's record our ending here we got our on our fourth play we got winning we got a winning ending but we didn't meet up with alexandra 68 at loss is where we ended up well i'll just record that so we had mm, three four endings three ending we got killed by the Chinese warlord. We ran out of money. Then we died some other way, and now we've just made it to Lhasa. There we are in Lhasa. All right, shall we talk about our thoughts of the game. Anna says, Drunk Tiger says, there must be an alternate route to get to the barley harvest. Anna says, most of the game had a good pace, but at some points it just jumped without explanation. I would agree. On this last playthrough, it didn't happen much, but it did feel like there were a couple moments where it felt like there was a card missing, like to, to, the, to transition between scenes. Like maybe there were some extra cards that got removed to keep the deck small. Just a couple scenes where it felt like we needed a wrap up of a scene before getting to the next one, which it skipped it. Okay, so um, Anna says, I don't feel like we earned this victory. It was sort of sudden that we got to Lhasa here. Maybe a little bit of the 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 pacing before dying and the pacing before winning felt like it needed one or two other cards to get up to it possibly um i would say overall though my feeling is quite positive about this game it was first of all the structure with all of these beautiful cards was really satisfying it was really just nice and re the reward of getting these new map cards to see this new art was reward enough to keep going and i like the text heavy nature of all of this right compared to some games which are really trying to be light on text for fear that people don't like reading this to me i really liked it this combination of full full card art and full card of text to me that's like the sweet spot for me and um i like how more how the what what i don't like in these choose your adventure games which is what is not satisfying to me are the things like all right you're in a fight do you want to give him a right hook or do you want to dodge like those random kinds of actions that you can't foresee what the right thing to do is and it feels there's no randomness in this game but it feels like completely unpredictable here most of our decisions felt like they had moral elements to it and although you could say well how do you know should you always do the thing that seems moral but then there were some ambiguous things like we didn't know whose motives were good or bad it just felt like those decisions were psychologically compelling 
right? Staying with Lapsang or not staying with Lapsang, there was a right answer. When we stayed with him, we got to karma. And you could say, well, how should we know whether to stay with him or let him um, pray in solitary and peace? I don't think... if You could say there's no way to know the right answer. I think that's completely fair. Um, but that's okay. It's a game that I think we're meant to play multiple times to get different endings. It's painless enough to play it multiple times. And it's very easy to avoid doing the things you did before. I like that. It, and it keeps with the spirit of reincarnation and stuff. Like I find that I find that very enjoyable. Like the fact that we played it four times, that feels like that's the way you're meant to play it. You shouldn't expect to win it on the first time. There were enough branching paths that it was interesting to play it a second time. Very thematic and flavorful. I mean, I feel like this captured a sort of philosophical story. Like the writing was appropriate for this Buddhist Tibetan thing. It was actually transported us to that place. I, I did feel like we were in this place making decisions as one would have to try to make decisions in this world. With a, We were in a different place. It felt very, you know, believable. It, 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 it was immersive. I felt fully engaged with this world, with the decisions in this world. Drunk Tiger says, the game structure was very good at what you have free choice, made sure that you failed on your first playthrough. The two pass through the pilot gave variety. Very well done. And those key cards, so that when you play it the second time, it gave us a extra karma. If we didn't have that karma from failing it the first time, we couldn't have passed the tiger. I think maybe that's what the t drunk tiger is saying. Like The only reason we were able to pass by that tiger was because we had failed once and gotten the karma that we could then reuse. That's very clever and very satisfying. And there's a better ending in this game, I assume, that we could have done. We could have stayed there and meditated for three years. Um, in this small deck of cards, you've got many hours of gameplay. I mean, if you think about this costing $12, being a small set of cards, and put, transporting you in a different world with a different mindset, we, had, we got this thing that would give us inner heat that we never got to use. We didn't, we could have gone on an expedition up to Everest. We didn't do that. Like, I'm curious how those other paths would unfold. I would say this is a real success. This would be a great game to give young kids. You could see if you were a group of two or three kids. You could discuss what to do, have these agonizing moral decisions about who to help, who to run away from, and replay it. This seems pretty fantastic to me. You could argue that you could do this as well in a book form, but... There are a couple things that it does with the cards that you can't do in a book that really worked. The map, the building of the map, that, and we jumped to different locations, that was very satisfying. Just visually building this map with this gorgeous art and having this map laid out in front of us was very satisfying. And then the fact that the map changes based on what you do and certain actions become available and get lost and then tracking how much money and how much karma you have, those are things that would be hard to do in a book and work perfectly here. And now we've played it three or four times. We've played it for four hours and we still have stuff we haven't seen. We haven't seen what happens with the nightmare, way to solve it. We haven't seen what we could sit in uh, meditation for three years. 
I am really positively impressed by this. Now, Marco said the previous game had potential but didn't live up to it, and he felt much more positive about this one. But I think I would go further. I would say this is a real, real success. And for the money, I have a hard time thinking of a narrative little game for $12 that comes close to this totality of experience. Again, not really a strategic game, but as far as a narrative experience transporting you to a different place, which successfully challenges you to, to sort of put yourself in the mindset of seeking inner peace. I mean, I bought into that. That scene with the tiger and walking past him rather than fighting. You don't, you, we didn't fight people in this game. We traveled up to monasteries. Yeah, huge success for me. I would, I, I'll probably get this as a gift for my little niece. I would, this is like, would be one of my number one little stocking stuffers I would recommend. Drone Tiger says, obviously Seventh Continent is longer. How do the game mechanics here compare, contrast with Seventh Continent? Um, yeah, it, Seventh Continent is completely different. Seventh Continent has little stories, but there's no branching choose your own adventure. And in Seventh Continent, it is about surviving, traveling. Every time you travel, it costs you, and you have to hunt for food. It's much more of a, as Anna says, survival game, much more of a strategic push your luck survival game with little, lots of little stories to discover on a giant map. This is much more a narrative, choose your adventure, branching paths adventure where you're going to get one ending in a short game seventh continent could take you 12 hours to finally die so completely different mechanics but the pleasure of of uncovering a map and exploring that you get from seventh continent you get here in a tiny little bite-sized flavor i do think there was a real sense of exploration here which was very fun it was very fun to explore these different areas and I think, you know, making a game where you replay, like this was the, this was the, um, this was what Time Stories tried to do to make it so that replaying the thing and avoiding mistakes was part of the game. But Time Stories felt painful to replay. Time Stories had luck and roll, rolling dice to pass tests. So replaying time stories and learning from your mistakes felt, oh, we don't have to go down those paths again, and we can explore different areas. And for me, that was just completely successful. And yeah, much more than I hoped to get out of this box. And there's still more. I would be curious to see the rest of the stuff. So I don't know how much worse the other games are. And this may be a case where this just perfectly, the fact that the setting with the reincarnation and karma uh, was so well, so well suited to this replay nature may make this box especially good. But I'm now curious to try the other boxes. There's one in Oklahoma, one about caravans. I forget what the third and fourth one is, but huge thumbs up. I would give this like, I think I'd give this a nine for me for what it is. It's obviously not going to be a nice, heavy strategic game. It's not going to be something I'd want to play. You know, it's consumable. But as far as recommending this as a gift to kids, to or, you know, to anyone for a fun game night, for what it is for a $12 game. Boy, it's hard for me to think of another $12 game that's as engrossing. Sounds like everyone, it sounds like Anna and Drunk Tiger also enjoyed it. What would be your final thoughts on, on this? Wouldn't this be a great little game to give to your, to young gamers who are interested in story narrative games? 
And think about what's so different from this. Most of these choose your own adventure narrative games have like lots of violence and fighting. And this one had like, there were moments of it when we were trapped in the dungeon, but there were some, there were some interesting little moral helping people and stuff, little twists that were sort of satisfying. So let's hear Anna and Drunk Tiger's final thoughts. It was good, great gift idea. Boy, the art makes a huge difference too, I think. I think this art is so compelling, both of with the maps. You know, this was my favorite part about Mortem, which I didn't have a lot good to say, but the fact that the maps are so compelling and you're building this bigger map, and just the art is, um, you know, whether fronts or backs, I just, there's something very satisfying about building a map with this beautiful art and having cards turn over to sort of change. You discover some new thing, so you flip the card and the keys that get seeded into the game. So on your next playthrough, it's a little different, different endings. Can't ask for much better than that. Well, thanks for playing along with me. Four hours, but we played it four or five times. Pretty good, and there's still an ending left to see. If you want to buy it and play it yourself before you give it away, you can reset the game for the next person. And to boot, historical facts, real people, learn about a real super impressive woman explorer and her real life story, and maybe a chance to meet her on if you play through it again and make different decisions. Drunk Tiger says, I agree. For young kids, this is fantastic. For experienced gamers, a bit shallow, but a fantastic short film-esque experience. Yeah, I think that's right. All right. Well, I will clean this up on my own. I'm glad that we played it. I had a blast. I'm glad we made peace with that tiger. Never go back in his forest again, though. Otherwise, you won't survive it. Maybe we'll play another one of these cases at some point. And I'll see you, hopefully in the next day or two, we'll get the replies from the play-by-mail games. But until then, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.